Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today we're going to be making a video on how to make porn in Blender. Yes, you heard me right, but the question is why? Well, the reason why is because I think that there's a real taboo around porn and sex when it is something that is entirely natural. Also, there's a lack of resources around um, creating porn, so I just wanted to remedy that um, by kind of making this video. Okay, so what are we going to be doing today? So let's have a look at the, a preview of the final uh, finished product. So basically, we're just going to be creating this product here today um, in Blender. So we're going to be doing a head hack. Okay, so and this is using rigid 3D's method. So full credits to him. I just wanted to make a full comprehensive tutorial on how to do it um, because I know that his tutorial was geared towards a very advanced Blender users who already knew uh, how to do things. Okay, so what is the advantage of this method over my previous method that you might have seen or you might not have seen? So this is a head hack, but not in the conventional sense. In fact, um, all the expressions uh, and this entire body right here is actually still the Genesis 8 female body, okay? Uh, it's from Daz and this means that the entire, we don't need to do any weight painting whatsoever and this skeleton uh, is exactly the same across all Genesis 8 female models. So we can transfer animations really easily and we have all the facial animations and all the morphs uh, intact. And let me just show you the rig. In fact, let me just go to pose mode and I'll just show you one thing that might, that might sh change your mind slightly about this. But this means that it's much cleaner than your average method of um, doing a head hack. There's no mess, as in like there's no seam around the neck area. Um, and plus the whole uh, figure is a lot, lot cleaner. Because if you look at the topology, we never even cut anything out. So let me just go to edit mode, have a look at this topology on the face. So <laughs> this method is my recommended method of doing a head hack. And I'm going to be uh, making my models like this from now on. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, but before, before we begin, I do wanna mention that there is an NSFW Blender rendering Discord in the description below. So please look in the video description and click on that link. If you have any questions whatsoever, or you wanna ask me anything about it, just feel free to send me a DM. Uh, you can just like message me here um, and I'll be happy to respond. Or if you have any questions, you can ask them here and I'm sure the really kind and talented people here will be able to answer. Okay, so now, now we're gonna go over the software prerequisites. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in a different way though, because there's a lot of software prerequisites and it kind of depends uh, what stage you're up to. I will put timestamps in the video. So basically, um, if you've already installed Dad Studio and uh, you have all the plugins and everything and you know how to install them, um, just skip ahead to this timestamp on the screen below, uh, on the screen like right here. And the second part is if you have a game model um, already, you'll be able to skip as well um, because I will be going over the complete process of how to import a game model uh, from Dead by Daylight in this case uh, with Nia. But uh, if you already have the game model from Open 3D Lab or you already know how to texture it and you've got it in Blender already, you don't need to do that step. Okay, so it goes without saying, you'll have to install Blender. So you can just type in Blender into Google and you just click on the first link. So just download this here. So you can just press download and then I won't do it because obviously I've installed Blender. Okay, um, okay, so that goes without saying, but now we're gonna look at the special software. So Daz Studio, so what is Daz Studio? Uh, before we install it, Daz Studio is actually a complete uh, 3D rendering and making, so you can pose, you can make models um, in Daz Studio. Um, so it's exactly like Blender. So why would we even use it? Well, it's used prominently for porn because there are nude models uh, that you can use from Daz that are uh, really awesome. They have really awesome topology and really awesome skeletons and expressions. So these are called the Genesis series of 
the characters. And the latest is Genesis 8.1, but we like to use Genesis 8 because there are more morphs and more clothing compatible for Genesis 8 characters. We use the bodies from there that the software has created, the Genesis 8 female bodies, because they, uh, they have genitalia and stuff, and we put it over to Blender. That's the crux of this method. Okay, so let's get with installing. So you want to type in Daz Studio into Google, and what you want to do is you want to click on the first link. From here, you want to click on the top, Download Studio. I will put the links in the description, by the way. So you'll have to register for a Daz Studio account and then log in. And you may need to confirm it with your email address, I think. Just click on this Daz uh, Download Studio button right here. So you'll have to download it and I'll just press Start Download. Okay, so basically you'll need to download Daz Central. So the installer for Daz Central. Now the second thing that we'll need to install is Daz Install Manager. So Daz 3D Install Manager, uh, this one here. So just type that into Google and we'll have to click on this one here. So this here is used to install any uh, plugins or extra content because Daz is really based around um, the idea of bought content. Like so you can buy clothing, you can buy morphs, you can buy like different uh, figures and characters. So basically you wanna just click on free download here and just press start download, okay? And yeah, so you'll have installed that. And yes, and the final thing we wanna install um, for for uh, the Daz side of things, if you don't have it, uh, for Blender, is Diffeomorphic Blender. So this is an add-on that connects both uh, Blender and Daz. So I'm just gonna click on this first link right here. The Diffe it should, you should see the diffeomorphicblogspot.com. And you wanna install the latest version of the plugin. So as of uh, recording, that is Daz Studio 1.6. So what you wanna do is you wanna come down here to the stable version 1.6.1 and you wanna click on this zip file right here. So this uh, Dropbox link, and you can just close that. You don't actually need to sign up. Um, what you can do here is you can just click on this button at the top left and if you just click download, so from here, you can just press on open folder and you should see that you have this zip file here. So what we can do here is let me just make a new folder here. So for this import Daz, so, so this is diffeomorphic add-on. So I'm just, I right click and I create a new folder. So, and then I've created this diffeomorphic folder here. So I'm just going to move this one inside. So I'm gonna drag it into the diffeomorphic uh, folder here. So from here, what you can do is you can right click on this zip file and you can uh, uh, extract or show more options, extract here or extract files. Okay, so uh, you should just be able to extract here and you should see these uh, three folders right here that uh, you'll be able to use. Okay, so now let's get on to installing Daz. Okay, so Daz is a little bit of a pain to install, uh, just a disclaimer. So what you wanna do, um, basically, if we just go back to our installers, let me just go to my programs, and you should see uh, these two things right here that we just uh, downloaded. So the first is the Daz Central, so you have to double click on it, so, and just press yes, and basically just press next, so all the default settings are okay. Um, I'm not gonna do it because I have installed Daz Central already, uh, but you'll need to install Daz Central. Okay, um, and the second thing you, you want to do is you want to install the Daz Install Manager. So just double click on it, press yes. Um, yep, yeah, and you'll need administrator rights. Okay, so just press next and next. So you have to accept all the conditions. All the default settings are okay. Okay, so once you've installed these two, uh, I've already installed it on my machine. You wanna open up Daz Central first. Okay, so when you open up Daz Central, um, so you'll just press the Windows key and uh, type in Daz and you should see Daz Central down right here. Okay, so Daz Central is uh, what Daz Studio is installed from. So the first time you open it, it'll ask you to install, um, it'll ask you to install uh, Daz Studio, okay? So just install, uh, follow the prompts and just press install and it will allow you to download that. Second thing is um, you might need to go down to Daz Studio Assets 
and actually um, install uh, the male and the Genesis 8 male and female characters. Um, so just press install. And so if you go down to Dad's Studio Assets, I can't actually 100% remember, <laughs> I think it's here. Uh, and you should just be able to press install. So you should be able to, like if you just go to the My Assets tab, you should see, as you can see here, I've got these other things. Uh, but all you need to do is you just need to uh, install the Genesis 8 Starter Essentials. Um, what else do you need to install? You need to install the, actually, I think that's it. Yeah, but anyway, like we can install it in the other part as well. If you don't do this, you won't see it in Daz Studio is the only thing. Okay, so the second thing we want to do is we want to search in this window search, uh, Daz Install Manager. You should also now have Daz Studio installed after going into Daz Central. Okay, so uh, just pretty much, let me just close Daz Central because you can't have them open at the same time. So I'll just close Daz Central and you want to open up Daz Install Manager. Okay, so for this one, uh, for this one, so you don't actually need a login, but you can log in. Um, so this will just be your Daz account. So you can just press start and just let it. Yep. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, as I said before, if you don't have these packages installed, so we just need uh, Daz Studio 4.16. Um, so that'll be in the ready to download right here. So you will just tick these boxes right here, but obviously I've installed them already. Um, but if you just tick these boxes and you can just press start Q and it will start to download and install automatically. Um, but the ones you need it are probably these ones. So Postgres, SQL, um, Genesis 8, Male Starter Essentials, Power Pose, uh, Female Starter Essentials, Female Power Pose, uh, and yes, and, and yeah, so that's all. Okay, so, and you can just press uh, the download, you'll press start Q once you've ticked them all in the ready to install things and therefore you'll have all the content installed. Just one thing, so for this tutorial, we are using uh, the paid content of Victoria 8 and NGV8. Okay, so basically we're using this one here, uh, the Victoria 8 um, DAS. And the second one uh, we're using is NGV8 uh, Victoria DAS. Okay, so if you want to use uh, the things that I used in this tutorial, I use this one. But obviously, you can also do this with just the base Genesis 8 model. You don't need to go to um, the, using these ones. Uh, now, I just want to transition to this part uh, to installing plugins to DAS. Okay, so um, obviously, so if we open up DAS Studio, you can see um, that we have. All we ha you should have uh, this uh, the Genesis 8 models, um, but um, how do we add add-ons? Because uh, Daz is really based on add-ons, so how can we add these characters like Victoria 8, Addie Hazel, or whatever? So let me just show you that real quick. So I'm just going to show demonstrate how to install uh, Daz uh, add-ons in two methods. The first is through Daz Install Manager. And the second is manually, and I'll tell you how to do it, um, or when to use which method. So let me just have a look. Let me just try to find um, this. Okay, yeah. So we actually have two very nicely, um, uh, two very nice zip files here. So this is what you'll get when you're downloading, um, when you're when you've gotten uh, add-ons for DAS. So you'll either get this. A zip file here or this zip file here. So the easiest way to tell which method is appropriate is to double click on the zip file here. Okay, so you should see that in the first one here, we have this manifest.dsx file and this supplement.dsx file. So this, if this is the case, if you see a manifest and a supplement, this is where we want to use uh, DAS install manager. So basically what we want to do is I want to open up Daz Install Manager again. So I'm just going to press the Windows key, search for Daz Install Manager. And I'm going to click it open and <laughs> you can sign in or you don't need to sign in, honestly. So you can work offline. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, I think it's just for updates. Uh, uh, but anyway, so from here, you want to click in this top right uh, for this cog icon here. 
and you wanna to go to advanced settings. From here, you wanna to go to the downloads tab right here and you wanna go into this package archive. So if you can just click on these three dots right here and then you wanna click somewhere in the empty space on this address bar so you can highlight it. So you can see I'm clicking right in the middle here. So I'm just gonna press control C to copy this path here. I'm gonna close it and I can also close this advanced settings thing. And let me just open up a new tab by just right clicking on my C drive, open a new window. So now I'm just going to click in this address bar here and I'm going to press control V. So control V means paste. So you can see that we've got this path uh, for our, where our downloads are, so where our archives are. So remember, we have this zip file here and it had manifest.dsx and supplement.dsx file. This means that we can use this, um, we can use DAS install manager, this uh, software here to install this. So we can just basically press control V, control C and to control V to uh, copy and paste this uh, file, zip file with the manifest and supplement.dsx file into here. So from here, inside the DAS install manager, just press this reload icon right here. So what you should see is this uh, DSX uh, file comes outside of this zip file here. That's how you know it worked. And it will appear under the ready to install menu. The reason why it's not appearing for me uh, is because I've already installed this package Victoria 8. Um, but um, if you haven't installed it, it will appear as one package to install and you can just, uh, you'll be able to like tick it and you'll be able to press install like at the bottom left right here. And then you just need to wait for it to install and we have installed the Victoria 8 package. Okay, so I'll just um, delete these because uh, we don't need it. Um, let me just go back into this folder here though. So that's the first method to install through automatically through DAS install manager. But what if we have a second thing like the uh, new gens uh, for Victoria 8, this zip file here. So can you see how there's no manifest.dsx file and no supplement.dsx file here? This is telling us that we need to manually install this plugin, but do not worry or this add-on, uh, it's very easy. So all we need to do here is we just need to copy this. So I'm just gonna select this ngv8.zip file, uh, press control C to copy. Okay, so I'm just gonna open up Daz Studio now. So I'm just gonna open up Daz Studio. Uh, I've opened up Daz Studio. Again, you can work off, choose to work offline or connect to your Daz 3D account. This is only for updates. So I'm just gonna press connect. To install plugins, it's pretty easy. So all we need to do here is we just need to go to my Daz 3D library, right click here. And what we wanna do is we wanna browse to folder location. Okay, so now we're right here. So let's just uh, get our file, our ngv8 zip file, and we'll just copy it here. So I'll select the file and I'll press control C to copy it and I'll paste it into my DAS 3D library. So the way you can verify that this is the correct place for this file is you can just double click inside this zip file right here. And if you have a look here, we have this data documentation and people and runtime folder. And can you see how where this folder here also has data, documentation, people, and runtime? So this is how you know you are unzipping it into the correct place. Okay, so what you need to do from here is just right click and you can just go show more options uh, for Windows 11, but you won't see this for Windows 10 and just extract here or extract files. So if you just extract here and you say uh, yes to all, you can replace all of them and then you'll have installed uh, the new gens. Uh, for Victoria 8, that should be good. Okay, so you can just delete this file now. Okay, so we've, we've installed all the plugins that we need for this tutorial. So you should see under the anatomy folder, uh, you should see we have the new gens and we also have the Victoria 8. So those are the two things that we're gonna be using in this tutorial. Okay, but the final thing we need to do just to prepare DAS, we need to install the Diffeomorphic plugin. So the question is, why do we use this Diffeomorphic uh, plugin? Um, the reason why is because the DAS to Blender bridge, which comes with DAS Central, is actually doesn't import skeletons and, and morphs correctly. And it, in general, Diffeomorphic is just much better. 
So it's just a custom plugin, which is a lot better. So let me just introduce you to you how to use this diffeomorphic plugin. So the first thing you should see uh, is if you remember, we went in this diffeomorphic folder, we right click uh, extract all or extract files on this zip file we downloaded from Dropbox. So we should have these three folders here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the import DAS plugin, which is the main plugin right here. And you should see that there's a folder right here, which, co which is called 2DAS Studio. So what we wanna do here is we wanna copy this script's uh, folder into uh, DAS Studio. So I'm just going to open up DAS Studio again, and I'm gonna right click on DAS Studio library and just go browse to folder location. So you can see that it's gonna be similar to how we install just add-ons in general. So I'm just gonna move this uh, scripts folder by dragging it over. And I'm gonna move it into this mydaz 3 d library folder. So you can just replace the files in the destination, um, but I won't do, it, do that because I've already done that. Um, but yeah, so you'll, you'll uh, in fact, why not? I'll just replace files at destination. So you should see that the scripts folder is now um, added in. Okay, so from here, we just need to do one thing. So under my DAS 3D library, you wanna go under the scripts folder right here. So you should now see that there's this diffeomorphic thing inside this. So you may need to re restart DAS if you've just placed it in and you don't see it. You wanna double click on this save root paths thing here first. And you wanna save your import uh, DAS paths.json file. Um, I usually like just to save it under my DAS Studio, but you can actually save this wherever, as long as you remember it. So you can just save it, and this will just save where all your folders are uh, for the Diffeomorphic plugin. And the second thing you wanna do is you wanna set up menu. So you can double click here, and yeah. So you can just set up the menus. So you should see now when you just go to file, you should see these two new options, export to Blender and export HD to Blender. So this is used to, to export uh, these scenes to uh, Blender, these DAS uh, characters and scenes to Blender. Okay, so now we just need to do one more thing on Blender's side. Okay, and so we wanna go back into our diffeomorphic folder. And remember that we have these three folders right here. We just wanna zip all these files here. So what we can do is we can right click on the Diffio HD folder, show more options, send to compressive folder, okay? So we should have this Diffio HD.zip plugin. Second thing we wanna do is we wanna right click on this import DAS folder, show more options, send to compressive folder. And same thing with the MHX RTX folder. So show, show more options, send to compressive folder. So you should see that you have these three zip files here. Uh, you can delete this import DAS MHX RTX uh, V1.6.1.4. We can delete that. Okay, so we have these three plugins that we just need to install. So let's just do that. So we'll go edit, preferences, and we'll go install. And we'll go to our downloads folder. And what we wanna do here is we wanna go to uh, the compressed folder, the diffeomorphic folder, and we need to install all these plugins one by one. So I'm just gonna install this import daz.zip file here. So I'm just gonna double click on it. Uh, let me just make sure that I have not, I'll just remove one of them. <laughs> I'll remove one of them because I've already installed one of them. Um, yeah, so, but anyway, so after you've installed it, you wanna make sure that it's enabled by making sure this arrow on the left, I'm sorry, this checkbox on the left is on. Okay, the sec second thing is you wanna install the mhxrtx.zip file. Just press install add-on. I won't do it because I've already installed it. And yeah, so basically uh, if it doesn't appear in the search, you just wanna go mhx, search mhx, make sure it's enabled as well. Um, uh, the next thing you wanna do is you want to install uh, the diffiohd.zip. And I won't do it, but you need to double click Install, uh, no, you need a install add-on and that will be there. And you should see, if you search up DAS, you should see DAS HD morphs, this add-on right here. So you make sure that it's enabled by making sure this checkbox is on. Okay, now we are almost there uh, with the end of this DAS setup. So it is quite painful. Um, but anyway, so let me just enable screencast keys for you. 
Okay, so basically, uh, when you press N, this will hide or show the properties panel. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to DAS Importer. So this one on the uh, top bar right here, click on DAS Importer, and you wanna adjust a few things before we import anything, which is you wanna go to the global settings, and what you wanna do is, number one, you wanna load root paths. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna to have to go to where we saved that, uh, that, that file right there. So if you remember the save root paths here, so I'm just going to click an empty, empty space in the top bar and just press control C. And I'm just going to um, go to the blender and I'm just gonna click in the address bar to highlight it and press control V to paste it. And what you need to do here is just uh, double click on this import dazpaths.json file. So wherever you saved it, you just need to find this JSON file and just press load root paths. Okay, so you should now see these content directories and this my daz 3 d library and this uh, library uh, path here is all loaded. Actually, we are actually done with the, with the daz side of things. Okay, so um, if you want to follow along with me and you want to uh, get a, a model from Dead by Daylight uh, to convert, uh, basically you'll need these two things here. So you'll need to search up in Google uModel and just click on the first link right here and just click on download right here. Okay, and you wanna download the version for your system. So uh, I would download the Windows 32 version, uh, but I won't do that because I've installed, uh, I have downloaded it already. Um, and yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find that zip file. So we're just going to find that zip file in my case, I have downloaded it to this folder right here. So you should see that you have this U model win32.zip file. You wanna right click on this file right here and you wanna show more options, extract here or extract files. Okay, so you wanna right click, extract here, extract files. And then you should see that you have these files right here. This U model 64.exe, U model.exe, and yeah, we'll, be have to, we'll have to use it uh, in a couple of seconds uh, to get a models from Dead by Daylight. And the second thing you want to do is you want to search for UE Shader Script GitHub. So this is a plugin that I myself made for Blender. And you want to go to the releases tab and you want to download um, this zip file right here. So just click on this zip file right here and just press start download. Um, I won't do it because I already, <laughs> I already have it. If you type in PSK, PSA, importer, GitHub, you should see BefZZ uh, thing right here. So from here, what you can do is you can right click the 280 direct link. So current branch latest, this 280 direct link here. And you wanna right click it, not left click it. Because if you left click it, you'll see the raw file. But what we want is we wanna right click the 280 direct link and save link as. Okay, so I just wanna save this somewhere. I wanna save it right here. Okay, I saved that Python file. So let's see, I'll just open the new Blender tab. And we just need to install UE Shader Script. So in order to do that, again, we just go edit, preferences, install, wait, sorry, edit. We go edit, preferences, and add-ons, install, and we just wanna go to our downloads folder, and we wanna go to, and we wanna find this UE Shader Script v1.2.3.zip file, and you wanna go install add-on. So from there, uh, you wanna check by just going UE space shader, and you should see that there's this add-on right here and make sure that the add-on is enabled by making sure this checkbox is enabled. And just click on this install button right here. And we're gonna go to downloads, compressed, and we're just going to install that PY file. So that IO import scene, unreal, PSA, PSK, 280.py, and you just click on install add-on. So I'm not gonna do it because I have installed it, but I'm gonna search up PSK, and make sure it's enabled. So can you see how this uh, thing right here, this checkbox is enabled. Okay, so we finally finished all the setup prerequisites. So you'll kind of um, realize that it is kind of annoying, uh, but let's actually start with uh, importing the game model and how we do that. So basically, uh, if you wanna import stuff from Dead by Daylight, 
what you want to do is you want to find Dead by Daylight, which is uh, view in games Dead by Daylight. Yeah. So you want to go to your library and find Dead by Daylight. Okay. And from here, you want to click on this manage cog and just click on manage and browse local files. So this will bring you to this folder right here. And you can just click uh, in the empty space right here to highlight this bar right here and press Control C to copy this path. So basically, um, to open up UModel, let's go back to our UModel folder. So remember where we unzipped this UModel folder here? You want to use UModel64.exe uh, if your computer supports 64 bits. If not, you can use UModel.exe, there's no big difference. But um, since my computer supports uh, 64, I'm going to open up this umodel.exe thing. So from here, I'm just going to uh, highlight this path to game files and press Control V. So you can see that I've now added this path to my game files, uh, Dead by Daylight. So from here, Dead by Daylight is Unreal Engine 4.25. So we have to go Unreal Engine 4 and 4.25. If you don't do this, uh, loading the models will not work. Then press OK. Okay, Oof. Uh, so now we just need to find where the models are and we just need basically the head and the hair. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the characters. So we're going to go under game characters because that's where the character models are. Campers are the survivors, slashes are the killers. So we want Nia who is a camper or and we're just going to open it up and obviously uh, Nia is right here. So we're going to get Nia and we're going to go down to models and we're going to go down to heads. And I'm just going to double click in here just to preview uh, what I'm going to be extracting. And I'm just going to press O to open up that folder again. So um, I'm just going to uh, click on this thing, select it, press export. And I'm just going to select my folder here. So export to this folder. Uh, you want to click on these three dots right here to choose where you want to export this to. So I'm going to export this to um, near rigid 3D tutorial. And I'm just gonna select folder, okay? And from here, you wanna just make sure that this is initially gonna be on TGA, but you wanna change it to PNG. Otherwise, we won't be able to use these textures later. Okay, so just press okay from then on and it will export your head, fine. Okay, um, but the second thing we need is we need the hair. So if you open up this folder, this heads folder and accessories and top, uh, we can actually expand this a little bit. You should see that there's a models folder here. And I know that the hair that I want is the default hair or the first hair, and that's going to be accessory 01 because that's how Dead by Daylight does it. So I'm just going to double click inside of it. And yes, this cap and uh, this hoodie, <laughs> a beanie, and this hair is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to press O and I'm going to select this accessory 01 ref and just go export and make sure that it's still on ping a PNG and make sure that this is uh, still in the same folder, which is going to be, and I'm just going to press OK. Okay, so we've exported everything correctly. Let's start, let's get this party started. So we're going to open up a new Blender uh, window and I'm just going to go general. I'm going to press A to select everything. In fact, let me uh, enable screencast keys. So I'm going to press A to select everything and I'm going to press X to delete. I'm going to press enter to confirm that. So now what we need here is we just need two things. We need the head and we need the, the, the head of the in-game model. Like it doesn't need any textures whatsoever. And we need the Daz body. So, okay, so I'm just gonna open up Daz Studio. So I need to get the model from uh, Daz Studio first. So this is the first thing that we have to do. We have, to inst we have to get the model from Daz Studio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, grab the, so I'm gonna go into the content library first. So just make sure you're in the content library right here. And I want to go under my Daz 3D library, under people, Genesis 8 female, uh, and the characters. So we can see that we have Victoria 8 here. So I'm just gonna double click on Victoria 8. And we can see that the model is loaded in. That's fantastic. Okay, so we can also go into under the anatomy folder and also load in 
the gens. So we can just uh, click on this here and we can get uh, the new gens uh, for Victoria 8 as well, just to match. Okay, so from here, we're actually completely done. All we need to do is we just need to save this scene and import it to Blender. So how do we do that? So to import a scene, a DAZ Studio scene to Blender, all we need to do is just go File, Save first. So we do need to save this as a DOF file before anything else. So I'm just gonna call this Victoria 8 um, with Jens, okay, with, with NGV8 a tutorial, okay? And we need to just save it. Okay, so now that's done, what we need to do is we also need to go File, Export to Blender. Okay, so we need to export to Blender uh, and we need to go, uh, yes, yeah, so we need to save this dbz file as well. So I'm just gonna save it. Okay, cool. So now that is completely done. I'm just gonna press OK. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I can now import uh, these characters into Blender. So I'm just going to get the DAZ importer. I'm gonna press Easy Import DAZ. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep all these settings uh, exactly the same as normal, okay? And <laughs> you might ask, how can we find these scenes? So good question. So if we just go file, uh, save as scene, and you just click somewhere in this empty, uh, in this bar, top bar, address bar right here, you can highlight it and just press control C to copy this path. Okay, so if you wanna go back to Blender now, we can just click on this address bar, press control V to paste and press enter. Okay, so now we're just going to import this DUF file, okay? so. Every, all these defaults are exactly okay, so we don't need to mess with it just yet. So we're just going to go import Victoria 8 with ngv 8 tutorialduff Okay, so just double click on it and you should see it works. Okay, so we're back. We need to also import the other uh, character as well. Uh, by the way, I will also just put this blend file in the description below if you wanna just import this, this uh, file here. Um, so you don't need to go through the trouble of installing uh, Victoria 8, um, but yeah. So uh, basically what we need to do now is actually import the game character. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go press N to open up this properties panel, go to PSK, and I'm just going to enable reorient bones. So the all setting is correct and now we can because we're gonna import both the mesh and the skeleton. So I'm gonna click on import PSK and we're just going to go to our folder right here, which is the uh, near rigid 3D tutorial. And I'm just gonna add it to my favorites by pressing this plus icon right here. So I can just, uh, whenever I need to, I can just come back to this here. So from here, I'm just gonna go game, characters, campers, uh, near, models, heads, and I'm gonna get the head right here. Okay, so we, we've got the head, that's good. And actually we don't need the hair just yet. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click on this model right here and shade smooth. So it looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna start to move it into place. So now let's just say that you have finished, um, you've, got this, you've got the game model already. In fact, if you didn't need to use PSK PSA importer, that's completely fine as well. So all we need to do now is we need to scale it up and make sure that it's the correct size and it's in the correct location. So we wanna position it as closely as possible to this head right here. So I'm just gonna press, I'm gonna click on this skeleton right here and I'm just going to not the mesh, the skeleton itself. Don't scale or move this mesh here, move the skeleton only. So the skeleton is the black bones. Um, in, in other words, this is a skeleton right here, this is the mesh. So if you can see this person, uh, orange person on the left right here. This is an armature or a skeleton. And this with the triangle right here, downwards facing, is the mesh. Okay, so now let's just see if we can press G and Z. So that means G means move and Z is obviously move it in the X, uh, Z axis. Okay, so I'm just gonna move it upwards and I'm just gonna scale it upwards with S. Okay, so S means scale. So I'm just moving my mouse to scale it upwards until I feel like it's roughly appropriate size. I'm gonna move it backwards a little bit. So I'm gonna go G, Y. 
So G, Y means uh, move it in the Y axis, as you can imagine. So the most important points that we really want to match are just the, basically the, the uh, lips and the nose, really. So in fact, is this a little bit small? If I feel like it's a little bit small, I'll press S and I'll just uh, scale it up and then I'll move it down a little bit. And just to check if I have roughly the correct thing, I'm just going to hide this uh, head mesh uh, using this um, eye thing right here. Okay, so this seems approximately correct, which I am happy with. So um, let me just check again. Uh, maybe I'll move it a little bit backwards. So I'll go G, Y. Yeah, so yeah, that, that looks good. correct. So don't worry about the ears. Um, if you can get the ears, that's great. Um, uh, you can, if you even had like morphs on the diffeomorphic body, um, you could try to match it more like it. Uh, but honestly, it doesn't really matter so much. As long as the nose and the lips are roughly in the correct place, you're in a good position. You don't really need to care too much. Okay, so obviously we can, if we have a look at this body, we can see it's got really bad, this head, it's got really bad topology. Um, but obviously this one right here with quads and very, very neat topology. Um, if you don't know what topology is, uh, topology uh, is like, um, I guess this, the, <laughs> like it's how the, the polygons are made. And it means that basically you can deform the mesh well. Okay, so we've got these two in the same position now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, click on this, uh, this skeleton right here. In fact, do I need to do it? Yes, why not? I'll click on this skeleton right here, this head skeleton, I'll press Control A, which is to apply transforms. And I'm gonna click on all transforms. So just to check if that worked, you can just press delete. And if it stays in the same place, you've done it correctly. So let me show you what happens if you don't, if you delete the skeleton without applying transforms, you can see that it's shrunk again and it's gone back to its original position. So if I just press Control Z to undo and I can just Control A to apply transforms. So remember, I need to select the skeleton first, Control A, all transforms. Okay, so we have these two uh, in correct place, great. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to, uh, export these two. So we're gonna export these two as OBJ files so that we can begin the wrap process. So um, one extra thing that we do need is we do need the wrap software. So I'm just gonna search up wrap uh, 3DS uh, Russian <laughs> into Google. And you wanna click on the first link here. So the R3DS Russian 3D scanner. So this software is used by uh, professional game companies to basically uh, make 3D scans with bad topology uh, to, model them, to model them onto other things. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on this download right here. So from this link here, and you want to click on Windows or Linux, so the version for your operating system. So obviously I'd click on Windows, and you wanna, after you've installed, after you've downloaded this, you also want to install it. So you wanna double click on it. After you've downloaded it, you wanna uh, click on it and just install it, okay? So basically, uh, you'll get this wrap software here. So you'll get wrap 2021. So if you search up wrap uh, 2021, 0.11.3, that's what you'll get. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> and also a small tidbit. Um, if you go to, basically, if you search up, if you click on your uh, address bar, go percent app data, uh, and you go to app data, local, and you go to uh, Russian, so wrap, I think it is, wrap, wrap. Okay, yes. So if you go to the wrap, so you go to uh, R3DS. Okay, so you go into app data, local, R3DS, wrap, and this trial.ini folder, this file here, you can actually just reset the <laughs> reset the 30-day um, free trial by just deleting this trial.ini file. Anyway, now let's get, let's continue. So we have these two models here. Now we just need to export these to wrap. Okay, so just make, okay, so one crucial thing I did forget about this. So if I can just hide 
So I basically, I can just hide this Victoria 8 mesh and this uh, skeleton right here, is before we export as OBJ, we have to actually, uh, we have to take away both the eyes and the eyelashes and the teeth and anything in anything that's not the face. So how do we do that? Uh, that's actually pretty easy. So let me just hide the skeleton as well. Um, what we need to do is we need to click on this mesh right here and we need to go to edit mode. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to separate uh, these eyes and everything else. So the first method to separate is basically you go to edit mode. So you can use tab to, uh, if you select the mesh and you go to tab, that will go to edit mode. And you can go under this uh, little red material ball right here. So you could try, so you could have a look for materials that are maybe the eyes or the mouth or the jaw, and you can just press select right here. So it only works if you're in edit mode, go to this red material ball, and you can see I've selected these eyelashes. So yeah, I obviously don't want to have this interfere with my wrap. So I'm just going to press P and I'm gonna separate by selection. So you can see now that this, if I open up this um, skeleton right here, this eyelashes thing is com something completely separate. So I can just hide it for now. Okay, so how can I select these eyes and the inside the mouth, like the um, inside the teeth? Like I don't want those, right? So if I just click on this M-I-N-K head O-O and I press select, you can see it selects the whole face. So that isn't any use to us. So what we can do instead is we can just zoom into the eyes. I'm gonna click a vertex on here. Okay, and I'm not gonna move my cursor at all. I'm gonna press L. So L means to select the linked area. Now I'm gonna move my mouse over to the other eye, over a vertex on the other eye, and I'm gonna press L. So I've selected that area as well. So that's one way to select uh, things really quickly. And I'm just gonna press P and separate by selection. Okay, so we can also hide these eyes here. So that seems good. Actually, wait, why is there? Ah, oh, yes, yes, I forgot to hide. This is uh, from the Genesis 8 female eyelashes. So you can also hide those as well. So that isn't actually from this model. Okay, so we've, we've, we've dealt with two of those, but now um, if I just uh, use, if I zoom in, so if I use shift tilde to go into fly mode, and I'm just going to press WASD to move. So I'm using W and I'm just gonna slow down by uh, scrolling backwards on my mouse wheel so I can move slowly. So if you look inside, uh, we have this jaw here. So when we're doing a face wrap, we can't have any teeth, we can't have any tongues, like we can't have any of that. So I'm just gonna click on this vertex right here, gonna press L, and wait a second, I can't select like these extra part. So these, like this jaw, won't select nicely. So let me just try selecting this other part. So let me just press L, and yes, I can select this part here, um, and I can also select this top jaw, but I can't select this tongue part. So what should I do here? So this is uh, where it becomes slightly tricky, but it's gonna be okay. So <laughs> I'm gonna use shift uh, middle mouse button to pan around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, if I just go inside here by using shift uh, middle mouse button, uh, and we're in edit mode. So basically if I just click on the object and I go to edit mode, so if you have every, if you have lots of things selected, so if you have the whole thing selected, you want to just go outside by going shift middle mouse button to pan and just click outside. So then you deselect everything. Okay, so just click somewhere empty and you'll deselect everything. From here, you want to go from this vertex select mode, which is default, to line select mode. So make sure that this second option right here is the option that you're on, so you'll be able to select lines. Okay, so. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to actually select um, around the lips. Okay, so we want to separate this. So we actually need to select a ring around. So what we're going to do is just select this one here and we want to go around and follow this one where the, the lips connects to the jaw part. So I'm just going to select, hold the shift key and just keep selecting around. Okay, and if you see that your camera clipping is clipping, so the default will look kind of like this. And you can see when I get close and I zoom in, it will kind of make things invisible. So that's kind of annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this, uh, if I press N, oops, if I press N here, 
and I press N again. So if I press N and I go to view and I change this clip start to 0.001, you can see that it's gonna be a lot less annoying because the, clam the camera doesn't clip that easily. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this ring. So I'm gonna select along, um, just using the shift middle mouse button to pan. And remember, you can use the shift tilde button to enter fly mode so you can actually uh, navigate a lot easier, okay? And we're just gonna follow this one where the flesh kind of connects, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna use middle mouse button, zoom out a little bit with the um, scroll wheel, uh, scrolling backwards and just keep going along, okay? So just keep going along. And I'll intentionally kind of make a mistake here, but that's okay, uh, just to show you how you can correct it. Uh, so I'm just using the shift key to add to this selection. Um, but if, if, let's say I've made a mistake here and I just use control, I can use control, hold the control key and I can deselect it. So if you see that at the end of your selection, something's kind of off, that's a completely okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep selecting around and just follow it around. So I'm just gonna follow it around this way and I'm just going to follow it down this way. So actually this is not the correct one to select, but I'll, sh I'll show you why in a couple of seconds, but it's okay. Um, oops, let me just use shift tilde uh, to go back here. I'll show you why like this ring is not correct in a couple of seconds. So if I just go shift, shift, um, and I'm just, I keep on selecting. So I'm just gonna shift, and I'm just gonna keep selecting that ring. Just using shift tilde to fly every so often, shift tilde, WSD, controls to fly. So W to move forward. I'm gonna use shift to keep on selecting this ring. Okay, shift, and I'm gonna keep selecting this ring and you'll find that it connects back to itself. Yep, so this one here. So you can see it's connected back to itself. But let's have a quick look at this, in fact. So if we look at this here, it's actually not selecting the right part on the bottom, right? In fact, let me just make it a little bit more clear by right clicking and mark seam. So if I, uh, we're gonna have to do that in a couple of seconds, but have a look, we're not really selecting the upper part there. In fact, what we're actually selecting is this lower part inside here, which doesn't really make much sense. So we're just gonna press Control Z and we're going to go back a little bit and we're gonna select the right part. So I'm just going to go inside the jaw itself and I'm going to select this, so I'm gonna press Control Z and yeah, so I'm just going to select inside here. So this is gonna be slightly tricky. I'm gonna select inside here and then I'm just gonna follow it along by holding the shift key and just, just selecting these lines up here. Okay, let's just double check this. So we might need to go into wireframe mode just to see uh, if the lines connect. They don't quite connect. So let me just hold the control key. Oops. Let me hold the control key um, to deselect this line here. Yep, yeah, to select, uh, hold the shift key to select this line right here. And I can actually deselect that one there and just hold shift to select that one there. So I'm in wireframe mode. And let me just go back to this mode here. And you should see that it's okay. So now we can keep on selecting. So we make sure that this selection is symmetrical. Hold the shift key, just keep going along. And yeah, so um, this is just, if you want to perfection it, <laughs> perfectionist it, um, just so we get the inside of the lips as well. So we're just gonna hold the shift key, keep going along. So we're gonna go zoom in here and hold the shift key and just select these things here. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's a perfect selection. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click mark seam. Okay, so you can now see that there's this red area here. So now we should be able to select linked, the linked area really easily. So if we just go up a little bit, just using WSD and fly mode with shift tilde. So if I just go press L here, oh no, it selects the entire face. What, what could be the problem? Okay, so the problem is we need to select change to face select mode, the third mode right here. Um, so if we select this now and press L, you should see that we get the correct selection. So you can't be in line select mode 
or face or vertex select mode, you need to be in this face selection mode. Okay, you need to be in face selection mode and press L, and then you should see that we're selecting the correct parts now. And now we need to move our cursor over these gray parts because we also want to get the upper and lower jaws. So we've got the upper and lower jaw pretty easily. And can you see how there's still gray parts here as well? So we're gonna press L to select that gray part there. And I think if we zoom in, there's still a cheeky gray part sneaking around there. In fact, let me just use shift tilde to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, we have quite a lot of, so we have to keep pressing L for quite a bit actually. So I'm just using shift tilde to get inside this jaw and I'm going to select everything here. So just by moving my mouse over it and pressing L. Okay, so I'm just gonna move along, press L. We're gonna have to press L quite a couple of times. So remember, you just need to move, hover your mouse cursor over it and you can just keep pressing L. Bop, 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 bop. It is a little bit annoying, uh, but yeah, that's kind of how we have to select and separate the mouth. Otherwise, this wrap will not work in the slightest. Okay, so I'm just keeping on pressing L. Okay, L, 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 L. And yep, I think I've selected everything. So I just have a look in shift tilde and I just walk around here. Yes, everything in this drawer except the front part is selected. Now I can just press P selection. And as you can see here, I can hide this. And now we just have this perfect uh, <laughs> kind of skin mask kind of thing, kind of creepy, honestly. Um, but we have this perfect skin. There's nothing inside here. There's no eyes, there's no jaw. There's no eyelashes because all those three things will get in the way of the wrap and you need to have them separate. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to export this uh, near head as an OBJ. So file, export, OBJ. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that it's selection only and we're gonna make it sure that geometry apply modifiers is off and turn on keep vertex order and I'm just going to overwrite my near head right here. Yes, I'm gonna turn off apply modifiers. So you can either turn off apply modifiers or for this second thing right here, you can delete the subsurface. In fact, if I click on this Genesis 8 uh, female mesh, I'm just going to delete this subsurface right here. Okay, so um, let's see. Now I'm just going to click on the game character head again. I'm gonna go file, export, OBJ. And what I'm gonna do here, just to be safe, is uh, click on selection only and make sure to turn off apply modifiers and turn on keep vertex order. So keep vertex order is very, very important. If you don't do it, uh, well, it's not gonna work. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back to my Nia rigid 3D folder and I'm gonna call this uh, Nia head. Okay, so, and I'm just gonna go export OBJ. Okay, so now I have to do the same thing, but with the uh, Victoria 8 body. So I'm just gonna go file, uh, export, OBJ. Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is make sure that the same options are ticked, selection only, make sure that apply modifiers is off and uh, keep vertex or off order is off is on as well. It's on, okay. So now we're just gonna go Victoria 8 body. Okay, yep, just press export OBJ. So the reason why we turn off apply modifiers is because if we use that subdivision surface, and we have that apply modifiers, it's gonna double the amount of polygons uh, in this uh, mesh, and we won't be able to use it. Uh, basically, it's gonna cause issues. Um, yes, yeah, so now we're gonna click on the Windows key, uh, uh, type in wrap, press enter, and now we have wrap here. So we can see that it is uh, paid software because it's 30 days left, uh, but yeah, you can reset the trial. Anyway, so what we're gonna do here is as you can see, if you put, put your mouse into this graph here, this is a node-based editor. So we need to recreate this one from Rigid 3D's tutorial right here. So, but I'll show you how to recreate this entire node setup. Okay, so in order to recreate this node setup, just move your mouse into this graph, edit, this graph workspace right here and just press tab, okay? So you wanna type in load geom and just press enter, okay? So this is how to load the different pieces of geometry into your scene. 
Now just press tab again, uh, type in load geom and just press enter again. And we'll have this one on the right hand side. Now we also need to press tab to search again. We're gonna look for select polygons and we're just gonna press enter, put it down here. I'm gonna press tab again. I'm gonna uh, search for a sub subset and just press enter. So this subset node right here, this, and then we're gonna press tab again, press uh, search for select point pairs. Okay, select point pairs. Okay, and I'm just going to press tab again. I'm gonna search for wrap and you can press enter. This wrapping node will go there and we'll press tab again and I'll go apply subset. So this one will be one of our other nodes. Don't worry, I will explain these nodes set up really quickly later, but I'll just press tab again for one more final node. Save geom, uh, save geom and just press this second one. So this save geom node right here. Okay, so we have all these nodes right here. We're gonna start connecting them up, but first we're gonna name this. So how do we name this one right here? So we just can right click, rename, or you can use F2. So I'm gonna call this G8F. So this is gonna be the Genesis 8 uh, model. And if I just click on this load geom one, and I press uh, right click, rename, I'm gonna call this a uh, Nia head. Okay, cool. Um, yep, that's fine. So from here, I'm just going to drag this blue uh, thing from here into select polygons. Uh, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag from GAF into subset. I'm also gonna drag from select polygons into subset. I'm gonna drag from subset uh, into select point pairs. I'm gonna drag this one into here. I'm just following uh, uh, rigid 3 d set setup, so I'm not doing anything magical. So um, you can just follow basically what I do. Um, okay, I'm gonna drag from subset into here. Just make sure to copy it exactly, otherwise you could run into problems. And drag from this uh, yellow, select point pairs to wrapping. And we wanna drag from, uh, we wanna drag from uh, this wrapping node uh, into the uh, middle of this apply subset. And we wanna drag from this GAF to the first blue one right here and select polygons, we wanna uh, grab the red one and put it into the red input of apply a subset. If you accidentally press the light bulb, you can press on it, uh, left click on it again to open it again. And we just drag that one to there. So apply a subset to save geom. Okay, now we actually just need to actually start loading geometry in. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to click on this first G8F uh, load geometry node, and I'm gonna click on the three arrows, uh, three dots right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find um, where I exported that stuff. So it's under right here. So this is the G8F one. So I wanna load the Victoria 8 G8F uh, body OBJ file right here. So I'm just going to double click on that. And you should see that there is something right here. So I didn't actually go over the navigation here, but you should be able to see the navigation in the bottom left right here. So basically if you, it all, it all revolves around the Alt key. So use the Alt uh, left click to rotate, uh, Alt um, middle mouse button to pan and Alt uh, right click to zoom in. Okay, so if you ever need any uh, reminders, just look in the bottom left. Okay, so I'm just gonna use Alt right click to zoom in a little bit more and then I'm just gonna use Alt middle mouse button to pan and then I'm gonna use Alt uh, left click to rotate and I'm just gonna zoom in. So you can zoom in also with just uh, uh, scrolling your mouse wheel forward and zoom out. Okay, and I'm just going to pan a little bit more. So yes, we have a good view of our character. Okay, so uh, now what we're gonna do is we're also gonna load in our second thing right here. So I'm just gonna click on these three dots right here and I'm gonna click on Nia head, the OBJ file. Okay, so um, so now we can see that they're both there if we click on this light bulb to hide or show, but this one should be a different color. So let's set this to red. Okay, so the near head node, this near head node, click on this color and make sure it is red so we can see a difference. Maybe not such a bright red. Um, it's just for our visual clarity, I should say. Um, let's actually make it a little bit less bright because that is hurting my eyes slightly. <laughs> okay, that should be okay just so that we can see there's two things there. Okay, so now we actually need to start 
uh, selecting polygons and stuff. So in fact, let me just quickly explain this node setup to you. So uh, first of all, we have these two nodes here. So these should be pretty self-explanatory. Basically, we're loading in two OBJ files, which is these two meshes. Uh, so we can see that we have one, which is the Genesis 8 Victoria 8 body, and the second one, which is the near head, which is in red. Okay, so we can just hide or show them with these light bulbs here. Now, this second node right here is the select polygons node. Basically, um, I'll explain it along the way, actually. Um, actually, you know what? I'll explain all this all along the way. <laughs> It'll make more sense. So let me just go to the visual editor tab right here, and let's click on this select polygons node. So you can see that the GAF connects to this select polygons node, and we can only see the uh, this thing right here, the GAF body. So basically, we need to select just uh, the head area, head and neck area, and we need to make sure we select the same amount as this near head. So we can use this viewport 3D, and basically, if I hide this right here, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see uh, correctly. If I hide this, you can see, I'm, I think I'm going to go over to perhaps, let me check around, Yes, I'm, I'm going to go like above this area here. So above these two spikes, I'm gonna select everything above that, okay? Because that's gonna be roughly even, and I can select, uh, yeah, it's gonna be roughly even between these two bodies. If you ever need to reload uh, something, you can just, uh, let's just uh, click on the three dots, click on near head, and just click on reload. Okay, so this will be the correct one. So we can see that it's got no eyes, no eyelashes, and no jaw section. Okay, so now we can actually go in and we can do the select polygons correctly. So let's just click on the select polygons node, go to the visual editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it around by using Alt and the left mouse button to rotate around. Okay, uh, from here, I'm just going to select a part on the back of the head and out of experience, I just press grow, okay? So we're gonna grow this selection until it's roughly around there, the, at the bottom of the neck there. And I'm just going to alt, alt, um, left click. And I'm also gonna select the material and I'm gonna select the face, okay? And I'm also gonna press plus material and I'm gonna select the lips as well. So that's good. Um, okay, so now we just need to determine like which area is gonna be the same. So if I hide this, if I hide this, uh, I have to hide this uh, wrap, this subset as well, actually. I need to hide all these other ones. So I'm just turning off the light bulb for everything else. And if I just hide this one right here, like the area that I want here is basically around the, I'm gonna make a common area around this, uh, these two things right here. So let me just show you what I mean. These two sharp, uh, quads around here. So if you can see these two sharp diamonds, I'm just going to select everything above it. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the select polygons node, click on that and go to the visual editor. And I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm just going to drag a lasso around the areas that I want. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold shift. And remember this, if you, if you use this tool, it will select faces behind. Okay, so we've selected too many faces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the control key I'm just gonna rotate my camera around by using Alt and left mouse button, and I'm gonna hold my Control key and just deselect these parts. So Alt and Control key, and you can see I'm just deselecting these parts here. So now we have a perfect selection, but before we do anything else, we're gonna go minus material, and we're gonna minus everything related to the eyes except the eye socket. Actually, we're gonna take away the eye socket as well, honestly, so we're gonna go minus material eye socket, minus material uh, pupils, minus material eye moisture, minus material irises, minus material sclera. So this is just to make sure that those parts aren't selected. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's see, let's see. What else do we need to do? Okay, so if we just go back here to the viewport 3D and I turn off the G8F here, and I turn on this subset, you can see 
that we've got like roughly an even area there, but this red area is not the same. So we wanna make these two areas as the same as much as possible. So this select polygons node and this subset node together. So this select polygons node selects the part of the mesh, but this subset actually takes a part of it basically. So it says that these selected polygons should be the only things that you see or are using currently. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with a near head. So I'm going to press tab here and I'm going to uh, search for the select polygons node. Um, wait one second, select polygons. I press tab and I'm just going to join this into here, the select polygons. And I'm also gonna grab a subset node because you can see that the same area hasn't exactly been selected. Wait, subset, subset, yep. And I'm just going to, because you can see that this red area is a lot lower than this blue one, which isn't so good for us. So let me just, uh, yeah, so I'll just connect this red from the select polygons and I'll select this near head and I'll put it into there. And I'll also put this subset into this select point pairs and I'll put this subset into there. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so, so now what we're gonna do is we're also gonna do the same thing by selecting a small area from the red, basically. I'm gonna hide this near head and I'm just gonna to go to the visual editor and select this select polygons one node. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select basically everything above a certain point. So above, everything above like here basically, everything above this thing here. I'm gonna select everything above it. Everything above it, basically, that's what I'm gonna do. If you wanna select the whole thing and you have everything deselected, you can just press invert. So that will select the whole thing. And now I can just select which ones I want deselected by holding the control key. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit by using the Alt uh, right mouse button. And I'm going to rotate with Alt, uh, Alt left click. I'm gonna hold the control key and I'm just gonna go around and just hold the control key, Alt. Okay, just using control key to deselect some of these things. So I'm going control left click to deselect. And I wanted to reselect things, I can hold the shift key and select them, but obviously I don't. So I just want to keep deselecting right here. Okay, I'm just using Alt uh, middle mouse button to um, to rotate it around. Okay, so I think this area should be roughly around the same. So now if we go to the viewport 3D, let's have a look. So let's have a look at this subset. So yep, so you can see right here. Oh wait, we have a few extra things selected. I might deselect just a little bit from there. So I'll go back to the select polygons node and I'll go to the visual editor, uh, select polygons. And let me just deselect this part hold the control key, and then this will be even. So yep, yeah, so wait, wait, what the heck? Wait a second. If I go back to the... Yes, okay, that's, that's good. Okay, it wasn't loading in. Okay, yeah, so now we can see that these areas are roughly the same, which is very, very good. They are all lined up and we've selected roughly the same. And remember, we can we can show to, to make sure that you have these selected. Uh, just make sure that the light bulbs for the subset nodes are on and everything else for these GAF and this near head is off because we're just hiding those. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to select point pairs. So this is probably the most annoying part of the process. So we're gonna to have to go to the visual editor. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this sync views uh, checkbox is enabled. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to select points. We need to select roughly around <laughs> 70 points um, that are roughly in the same areas. Okay, so let me just show you what I mean by that. So you need to make sure that this select point pairs node is selected. And I'm just gonna use the Alt uh, middle mouse button to move, uh, to, to pan it. And I'm just going to show you what I mean. So first, what we need to do is we need to select one point. Uh, usually we're gonna start off with easy points, like points on the middle of the nose, okay? So I need to select the one on the right-hand side, then on the one on the uh, left-hand side. Okay, so now the next one I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hold the Alt uh, left mouse button so to, to move around. I'm gonna try the middle of the lips, actually. So the middle of the, actually no, so the middle of the end of the nose. 
let me just finish all the nose ones. So I'm just using, uh, uh, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in. So I'm just gonna select something on the middle of the nose, the middle of the bottom of the nose, and we're gonna select the same thing right here. Yep, yeah, okay. Actually, let me just press Control Z. So you can press Control Z, and if you don't think a point is in the correct place, you can just left click on it to drag it down a little bit. So maybe, so to change the position. So let me just say roughly around there, I should say, is one. Okay, so we need to keep going. So we'll just go for this point around the side. So I'm gonna use Alt left click. So just around the corners. So the most important, okay, sorry, wait, let me just go Control Z. We have to do like one side first. We do the red side and then we do the blue side immediately. Otherwise we'll forget because you need to make sure that these points are in the same, the numbers are exactly the same. Now, the most important thing here is that we get the general shape of the face. So we don't need lots and lots of points because after a while, if you add too many points, placement accuracy becomes an issue. So we just wanna make sure that we have the general shape of the face. Okay, so we're gonna outline, outline things basically. So I'm just gonna outline this one right here Okay, roughly, yeah, that's good enough. I'm gonna do the corners. The corners of the lips are usually the easiest because we know we need them. Um, and we can do this as an iterative process. So yep, we got the point there, we got the point there. I wanna do the corner, the right-hand corner. I'm gonna do the right-hand corner there. I'm just gonna left click, probably around the same. In fact, let me zoom in. Let me just check how many this is. So this is one, two, three, four. Let me do the same, one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna make sure this is symmetrical. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm counting how many, one, two, three, four. I'm counting how many lines <laughs> just to make sure that I'm symmetrical and I'm not messing it up too badly. Okay, uh, we might also want one on the middle of the lips maybe. So the middle of the lips I think would be there. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, we'll continue by going maybe at a point on the bottom of the lips. So the bottom of the lips would be here, and the bottom of the lips would be here on this one. Okay, so we probably also wanna outline the bottom of this one right here, I'd say. So I'm using Alt, left click, and I wanna outline the bottom there. In fact, let me move this one up a little bit, cause I, uh, actually, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, so I'm just holding, a clicking down with left click and to change the point. Okay, so we'll just click on a point here and I'll click on a point roughly there-ish, I'd say, is equivalent. And we'll do a point over here-ish and we'll do a point over here-ish as well. Okay, we'll do a point there-ish. Yep, yeah, okay, now we also need probably one, like we need to do the end of the lips, so maybe here, like a point a quarter across, and maybe a point there-ish. So a point there-ish would be just after there, be there, yeah, roughly there. Okay, cool. Yep, so we've just outlined just that area there. Um, okay, yeah, it seems fine to me. Okay, so we also need to do parts on, we need like one in the forehead right here one on the forehead, roughly between the eyes. So between the eyes would probably be here on that. Um, we also need one on the forehead. I'll just make one on the forehead here. And now we need to outline the eyes because the eyes are a huge part of this. And if the eyes aren't there, um, like if the eye shapes aren't correct, that's usually what makes a character not look realistic. So I'm just gonna go put one on the top of the ridge here and I'm gonna follow one on top of the ridge, like roughly around here-ish. Okay, we're gonna put one on the bottom as well, because why not? Um, roughly around there. Um, let's just put uh, the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna start off with the corners. So the left and right corners. Um, make sure if you do do two points at a time that you do the same amount. So just make sure that if this is a 23, there should be a 23 points all right, it's, there should be 24 points on both sides, the same amount of points. Okay, don't get in the situation where you've got points not lining up. 
because that will be very bad. Okay, so let me just, okay, somewhere around there, somewhere around there, somewhere around there. Okay, so don't worry, uh, you don't need to be too fussy about the points. Uh, we just wanna outline general features. So we're gonna go around the cheeks as well. So the cheekbones, roughly the cheekbones should be around there. And I just wanna outline them. Oh God, I did not outline them in the same place. Well, it's roughly around. Yeah, roughly around there-ish actually, I'd say. Okay, fine, I'll put it here. <laughs> yeah, I'll just make sure that they're symmetrical. Um, okay, yep, that seems okay. So now we just need to add a few more points to the eyes, honestly, because the eyes do not have enough points there. So let me just add a point to this here, point there, a point here. We want the points to be more dense around critical areas. Okay, so a point here, a point here, like the eyes. Okay, so these are critical areas. So I'll just point it here as well. And we'll add like a point in between each of these points. Let me just bring this down a little bit because I want that to be more accurate. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So let me just add a point here, add a point to the top, add a point here, 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 add a point here. Just make sure that the point count is the same. As you can see, I have been keeping track of the point count quite a bit. Okay, so I might also outline the edge, like the, the where the nostril starts. Actually, it's a little bit hard. Actually, I'll let wrap kind of do that. Okay, so if you start facing like clipping issues like this, I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to mention, if you, if you start facing clipping issues like that, what you should do is you should go to edit preferences and make this from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01, okay? So just press okay. And then now you should be able to zoom in real close without any clipping. Okay, so now uh, let's see. So we have to get the edge of the nostrils. So the inside of the nostrils. So let me just pan the camera upwards. I mean, rotate the camera upwards. And I'm just going to get this point right here. And that's probably around here on that. So don't worry, we will fix the geometry. I don't know why <laughs> the Victoria 8 geometry in the nose is a little bit weird, that's okay. Okay, so we've got that, that seems good. Okay, we might just put a point here and put a point here, oops, and a point here and a point here, just for, just to help the retopology a little bit. I help it wrap uh, better. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so now we get to the most difficult part, which is probably the ears. Actually, before we do that, let me just put one point on the center of the chin. Okay, let me just, uh, I'll just move it down to the center of the chin. So that's right there. And let me just rotate around. Let me put one on the neck. Uh, let me put one on here, maybe. One on here. Okay, yep. Maybe one here. One here, -ish. yeah, cool. So we have the same amount of points, which is good. Let's do the ears. Okay, the ears are kind of annoying, um, but that's okay, we'll give it a shot. Okay, we might outline the temples right here. So the temples. I don't really have a temple here. Actually, no, I, I see it's doing the temples. Let's just have a look. We can do this in iterations anyway. So let me just zoom in. And what I'll do is, okay, so these ones are kind of annoying. What we wanna do is we wanna get a side view of these. And I just wanna do similar points. So the easiest ones are usually these ones here, um, but we may have to fix quite a bit this later in Blender anyway. So, maybe around okay so we want to do point at the top so a point at the top maybe here okay and let me do a point here here okay so maybe at the top of this yeah that seems around there this seems around there-ish so if you do a point accidentally like if you, if you had a point there what you can do is you can just 
click left click on it and drag it there like if you wanted um, but anyway um, let me press control yes 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 so one of my points wasn't actually on the correct place so like 46 I need it actually on the ear and it wasn't on the ear when I like rotated around so I needed to left click and drag it to be on the correct place okay so we're gonna keep outlining here 47 wait okay let me drag 47 onto here and let me just drag put a point here okay put a point here put a point here and yep so we need, do need to do the inside of the ear as well which is going to be slightly annoying okay so let's do the inside of the ear so this is a little bit tricky let's just go with the key points that we know so like this point here and that point there like those are probably the correct places um, so this point here is probably up here this point here is probably around here just go with approximate you don't have to be a hundred percent correct just as long as you're roughly there is kind of good enough okay so yeah okay yep yeah. okay and I'll probably let's see let's see let's see okay just around there okay we're almost done and I'll just say maybe one wait I'll move this one back there I'll move a point here okay yep so we're almost done and let me just do the other ear and then we should be almost done with this okay 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 so um let me just bring it up okay so let me just uh put a point here on the edge let's put a point here on the top of the ear again it helps to put it put the ear on an angle actually so you can actually see what you're doing um, wait so maybe around here ish that's actually around here then this part would be around here okay so actually let me just check 44 okay this one needs to be up on the actual ear so sometimes if you look around you should see that it actually needs to be on the actual ear because some of the points don't like might especially when selecting the ear need to be redone okay so now let's keep going along let's go with the top let's go with maybe a quarter in maybe quarter in ish oops okay let's make sure i'm selecting on the ear you can press Control Z to re to undo points, and I'll just I'll drag that one actually on the ear. Yep. Okay. And then I'll just do this one. Oh God, that one's not actually on the ear. So let me drag it actually onto the ear, and let me just put this point here. Maybe this point in the middle of these two. So I'm just like putting a point in between a lot of these points. That's kind of how I'm I'm operating. So I just do the obvious points, like the corners and everything, and then I just uh, kind of do it equivalent. So I can zoom in, and let me just make sure that this point is here, this point is here, this point here, here. Kind of zen, actually, <laughs> doing 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 this, honestly. Um, if I just put this up here, because it's like you're just putting points in, and it's kind of just chill, you know? You can just put on some music and just kind of do this um, let me just do the same here so let me plop, plop this here and there okay so this should roughly be okay I'd say so let's just have a look how this how this is gonna uh, if this is gonna be okay I think it's gonna be roughly okay so we have roughly we have 74 points I'd say that's roughly enough usually um, let's just try to re let's try to wrap so I'm just going to hide these two subsets now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this wrapping node and just press compute. Okay, so and now it should try to wrap that uh, thing to this other mesh basically. Okay, so let's have a look and let's just hide. Let's, let's um, go to the viewport 3D and let me just uh, hide, unhide this uh, wrapping, this wrapping node right here. Okay, so this one, and let me have a look at the G8F, I'm sorry, the, the near head. 
Okay, so yeah, it's wrapped it pretty well, I'd say. Um, I'm just gonna have a look for key issues, but honestly, this one looks really, really nice. Like the ears are not screwed up, but let me just hide this near head and just look at the wrapping. Yeah, don't worry about small things like that. We can fix that in Blender, but, and, and, and especially these eyes as well. These eyes are a little bit screwed up, but that's okay. Ooh, this ear is a little bit, I'm not really happy with this ear. I would like to redo it slightly. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not hundred percent fussed, but there's a little bit there I'm not happy with, but everything else seems to be pretty good. Like the nostrils and the eyes and the, sh the face, the shape, uh, the head of the, sh the, <laughs> the shape of the face looks pretty good. So I'll just redo that other thing. So I'll go to the select point pairs mode and just go to visual editor. Let me just check why is that? Oh yes, so this is so off because this one is on, on the head, okay. That seems to be better. Maybe I'll try to adjust these positions a little bit more nicely. So I'll just zoom in a little bit with the Alt uh, right mouse button and I'll just zoom in a little bit. I'll just try to do these points, move them a little bit, a little bit better maybe so we don't get so much clipping. It doesn't matter too much. We can kind of clean up most of it in Blender, so that's okay. Uh, but we kind of want to be as accurate as possible at the same time without like, without taking too much time. Okay, so I'd say this is probably okay. Okay, so let's go to the wrap. Let's do a compute. And let's see if this is a little bit better, hopefully. Let me go to viewport 3D and hide this wrapping node and unhide it. Yeah, that's a lot, lot better. Okay, so yeah, those those other issues are really easy to fix. Okay, so from here, okay, so what did we do here? So basically, a quick overview, this select po polygons thing is just to select parts of it. So let me just show you the subsets again. So basically we selected a part of the whole uh, Genesis 8 female body. And for here, we selected a part of the near head basically. Okay, so we selected just a part of it. Okay, so that's what the select polygons and subset things do. So select polygons, you've selected the polygons, but you don't know what to do with it. So the subset tells you we're just trying to use that information which you have selected. Okay, and the select point pairs node is basically um, we're selecting some points from both uh, meshes to guide our uh, to guide our wrap. And the wrapping node is basically wrapping it an apply subset is we're just we're just kind of uh, apply subset. Let me just show you what it means. So the wrapping, like we've wrapped this part, but we don't want to change anything else. We just want to uh, change just that that part there. So we're applying the subset to the uh, we're just applying this wrap to the areas that we selected from the select polygons. That's what the apply subset does. So we're applying it to the whole body again. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna save geometry. So the save geometry node just saves it, as you can imagine. So I'm just gonna change this name here. I'm gonna change it and I'm gonna go put it into Seabrook. Okay, Blender Projects, NSFW Projects, Near Rigid 3D Tutorial. And I'm gonna call this a Near, uh, okay, it's a Genesis 8 Female Wrapped. Okay, um, and the OBJ is fine, so just save and then just compute current frame. Okay, so yeah. So now we have the entire OBJ file. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to our blend file here. And then basically what we can do is we can hide all this, this, in fact, we'll make it a whole collection. So I'll shift select everything on the head. I'll press M and I'll make a new collection. I'll call this original, original uh, near uh, head. Okay, so from here, I can just hide this original near head, so I don't need it. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import um, the, the um, Genesis 8 body into Blender, so we can clean it up, basically. So I'm gonna go File, Import, uh, I'm gonna go OBJ, and I'm gonna find where we put that near rigid tutorial, and I'm just going to find the g8f wrapped.obj file because that's the thing that exported from uh, wrap. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that keep vertex order here is selected, okay? So make sure keep selected 
uh, key vertex order is selected. We can import OBJ. And basically what I'll do here is I'll shade smooth. So I'll right click shade smooth. Okay, so this is actually completely fine. So you can see that we have, it's a little, it looks a little bit messy. So we'll just clean it up. So the way we can clean it up is we can just press, go to edit mode. And I'm just going to uh, go to vertex select mode. And I'm just gonna clean up a few things. So what you can do here is you can actually, before you do this, go back to object mode, select the GDF wrapped kind of thing and just make a shape key. So just say, so make a basis shape key. So this is what we'll be sculpting off of and then make another one. So we'll just call this corrected. Okay, so I'll just show you what it does in a couple of seconds. So let's have a look at this one. Let, let, let me show you like what it does first. So make sure you've selected the corrected shape key first before you make any changes to the mesh. So you go to edit mode and then you just make your change. Okay, so let's say I've moved this one up right here. So I can go back to object mode, and when I bring this to one, you can see that it, it takes that change. So basically, uh, it's a non-destructive way to kind of make some changes to the mesh. And we're just gonna be doing our corrections like that with shape keys. So we're just gonna press the plus again, and I'm gonna call corrected, and I'm gonna go to edit mode by pressing tab. I'm gonna press GZ. So just to move it down a little bit because I don't want it to be so pronounced. I really don't need it to be. Maybe I'll move this one down. Uh, no, no, you know what? I think roughly around there is okay. Maybe just move them down a little bit by just pressing G. Okay, cool. Okay, um, let's have a look. What else? What else? Let's have a look at... Okay, so this area here is a little bit... Um, broken. I don't really like that much this one. So I'll probably move this one out a little bit because I think it just looks a little bit off to me. Uh, yeah, if I can just move it out a little bit, maybe just, just a little bit. I think that would look a little bit better to me because we've kind of gotten a really blocky shape, which doesn't look so natural, which I'm a little bit sketchy with. So I'm just going to move the lips out a little bit just so we just get less of that blocky shape. So, yeah, okay. Let's move it out. So just to smooth things out. Okay, so now the thing we kind of need to kind of have a look at is these, this neck here. So we need to correct this neck. So let's just do our corrections to this. So what I'll do is I'll just bring all of these inwards because you can see they're kind of popping all outwards. So I'm just holding the shift key, selecting this kind of thing here. And I'm just going to hold the shift key a little bit, uh, maybe not these ones, because it's halfway, yeah, so roughly around there-ish. And then I'm just going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select them all, press G and I'm gonna press Y. Just move them in a little bit. So G, Y. In fact, what I can do here is I can use proportional editing. So I can use proportional editing by enabling this thing here. And if you press G, you'll see that you're moving the whole figure. So that's not what I want, but if you press G and you and you just scroll inwards, so you can see if I scroll outwards, I'm expanding my, my uh, circle of influence. If I'm scrolling inwards, I'm uh, making it smaller. So basically, if I just press G and then now, like it will move points like that are close to it as well. So let me just, she, yeah, I'll just move them inwards just a touch, I feel like. Oops, that's probably a bit too much. And I'll move them downwards and kind of inwards a little bit. So you can see that's starting to look a lot more natural. Okay, G. And they aren't stretched as much. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. I'm gonna do probably the rest with just a mouse because we just want to kind of edit the points a little bit more directly and not have them influenced so much. Okay, yep. Might move these ones out a little bit though. They feel a little bit awkward. So let me just move them out a little bit because it does need to go out a little bit here. Just as like a ridge kind of thing. Um, I'll also move some of these points inwards a little bit. Okay, and yep, so just use middle mouse button to kind of 
move them around. You can also use sculpt mode here to kind of uh, to kind of um, do these, but yeah, I just like to use edit mode. Feels more intuitive to me. Okay, so I'm just going to select this ring around here. I'm going to actually use the W key and just to change selection modes to select circle. So I can just actually, I can hold the shift key and I can add this to my selection really easily. Um, yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, cool. Now let me just press G and Y to move it outwards a little bit. Okay, that's too much. G, Y. Um, yeah, that's looking better. In fact, it's a G, Y. G, Y, maybe move it inwards just a touch. Yeah, look, that's starting to look really natural. So, yep. So let me just move these two a little bit outwards as well, just so it looks a little bit, a little bit less awkward with the neck kind of stretching out. I think that looks really good actually. So like basically, if you go back to object mode, you can actually compare before and after. So this is zero and this is one. So you can kind of see like, so this is a non-destructive way. So if you didn't want these changes, you can kind of delete it. Uh, but you can see that the neck looks a lot, lot better. It doesn't look so awkward. If we just, yep, you can see that it looks a lot, lot better. Okay, so let me just go to tab to edit mode and make sure that the corrected shape key is still active. We're gonna have to correct these eyes as well. Let me just move this point down a little bit actually. Okay, let me just move this a little bit down. Just a little bit. So it looks a little bit better. Yep, that looks better to me. And let me just go W to go back to my tweak tool. Okay, so now we kind of need to correct because these ear spots will usually have some difficulties. So you'll see that it's kind of clipping. So what we should do is, yeah, so you can have the clip start distance to be 0 0.001. Um, that might actually help when you're inside the face. And what you want to do is you can see that these points are kind of clipping outside because they look a little bit weird. So these should actually be, um, usually on the other side, actually. So let's have a look. Let's have a look where it belongs to. So I'm just gonna bring it inside, basically. So if you bring it inside, you should start to see like where they should belong. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring it inside first and then I'll worry about making it look good second because there are a few extra points here which are clipping inside, which I'm not liking so much. Okay, so I'm going to bring this point inwards as well. So I, you, you can you can rotate your camera around, or you can use G X to move it inwards a little bit. Okay, where is this final other point that's kind of irking me? Is it this one here? Yeah, maybe if I can just move that to the side a little bit, I think that's causing all these other points. And I'm just going to move this one inwards. Okay, this one. Okay, yep, I'm just moving it to this side. It doesn't matter if you edit them a little bit. Like basically, as long as it looks good to your eye, it should be okay. Okay, now let me have a look. Okay, yep, I'm just gonna move it from the outside. Now that is looking natural. Okay, let's have a look above the ear because above the ear is usually where the clipping happens. If I go GZ, let me bring this down a little bit. Okay, yep, so this probably should go over here-ish, I feel. Somewhere around here. And G, Z. Okay. Uh, let me just move it top here-ish. I'm just rotating my camera around to get a good view of it. And this one here, G, Z. Probably gonna bring it down a little bit. Yep, that looks good. Okay. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so now if I look inside the ear, you can see that nothing is clipping. Actually, this is clipping right here, what is going on? So this one should probably be below, I'm thinking. So G, X. Yep, so G, okay, so G, X, maybe just put it inwards a little bit. And let me just have a look on the other side of the ear. There's a little bit here, which is kind of clipping inwards. Um, not a lot we can do. 
I think maybe something like that, a small change there would help. And make sure that you're selecting the corrected shape key, not the basis shape key. Otherwise your changes will become permanent. Okay, yep, that's good. Okay, let's do this one here. Okay, so this one's actually quite easy to do because we can see how badly it's kind of it's kind of coming in. So we can just edit it quite easily. So G, so G if I move it inwards. Okay, so you can see obviously it's clipping there, so I need to move it around here-ish. Let's try to find that other point, that other point there on the other side. Let's bring it inwards. Let's bring this one inwards. Okay, let's see, let's see. There's some other points here which are a little bit stuck inwards as well, so I'm, I might move them inwards a little bit just to see if... Okay, so there's this point here which is needs to be inwards as well. So I'm just pressing G to move them in. Um, oops. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. So there's... Now let's try to rectify this shape a little bit. So there's some point here. If I just go shift tilde, and I slow myself down a little bit. Okay, so there's some point. I might go to wireframe mode actually, just so I can see it more clearly. Yeah, there's a point inside this which shouldn't be inside this. I think. Yeah, that looks right. Oops, not that one. Okay, now let me go back to material solid view to have a look. Uh, still got some clipping going on. Because anytime you see that, you should note that that should be GX. Okay. There's some weird things going on here that I don't like. Okay, this one's a little bit more tricky to patch, honestly. Um, let's have a look. There's a point here. There's a point here which should be outside, I think. I think that might be causing it. Okay. Yes, okay, Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that kind of patched it. So now we don't have that awful clipping anymore. Honestly, it doesn't really matter so much because these are inside, but you know, just for the sake of perfection, uh, we like to kind of keep things nice. Let's have a look at the other side and how the other side looks so I can get a general idea. Okay, cool. Uh, let me just roughly do it. It doesn't really matter because this one's inside anyway. So it's not really going to make a big difference, but you know, might as well do it as best as possible. Okay. And let me just place this inside a little bit more. Let me get a little bit closer actually. And can I just bring this out a little bit? Okay. That looks good. Okay. Good enough. I'll call this kind of done. Yeah, I'll call this kind of done because otherwise we'll never get this tutorial done. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see how we do it. So we're just trying to adjust it so it's not clipping outside the mesh because that'll look really weird. Um, okay, let's look above the ear. So it's usually above the ear, which is the problem. So G, Z, okay, somewhere around there. And what about here, G, Z, bring it into the ear. Yep, there, look at G. Okay, so G there. Okay, 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 so that looks okay to me. Okay, so that looks good, that looks good. Okay, so let me just look above the ears, there's nothing clipping. Is there anything clipping here? I think we can kind of leave this stuff clipping occasionally because it's not too bad and it kind of is the shape of the ear that we need. Um, let me just, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we can adjust the ear just a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna to get to the finer correction. So we're gonna make another layer to, oh wait, actually, sorry. Let me just correct the eyes before I do the finer corrections because these corrections, I kind of say that they're kind of Actually, okay, whatever, we'll make another we'll make another shape key. So I'll make another shape key and I'll call this 
I corrections. Okay, and I'll put it to one and let me just do these ones. Okay, so I'll just make sure that these are kind of circular. And then we might make one for the ears and stuff. So I just kind of want it to move outwards a little bit because it's kind of strange, honestly. Some of this is a little bit off. Okay. So you might want to look at it from num numpad one, which is front view, just to adjust it a little bit. Okay, these ones. Okay, I just want them to be circular, to look circular from the front is my key concern with them. Yeah, can you just, can you both of you move outwards a little bit? And can you move upwards? Okay, yep, yeah, that looks good. Looks much better. Okay. I'm just fixing it up a little bit because this uh, right eye is the is the one that's a problem. Um, the left eye actually looked pretty much okay. I'm just going to fix inside a little bit as well. Inside doesn't matter so much because we're not going to be seeing so much of it, but you know, we want to kind of fix it as much as possible. Okay. We're kind of just making it a little bit more circular. Kind of still want to keep some of the up and downs, but you know, just to kind of rectify it a, a little bit out. Okay. Have a look. Okay, that looks a lot better, but let's look from numpad one. I still not 100% happy with it. I want it to be more circular. I want this overall shape to look more circular than it is uh, otherwise because it's kind of just not quite there. Yep, I'll just move it upwards. So you can kind of just take the time to refine this. Um, You'll just be editing these ones, and the more you do, the more the more good your model will look at the end. So here we'll just move it back a little bit. Maybe move that. I can move that. Okay. This is a little bit messy here, so I'm just going to move him back a little bit. Okay. Maybe this one here one here just follow the curve a little bit more so you can see it's like getting a lot better we can have a look at it before and after with a shape key <laughs> it's kind of really satisfying to look at it before and after to see the products of your work okay let me just bring this one down a little bit maybe okay let's look at numpad one from the front view might just bring this one up a little bit Pad one. Okay, she said. Okay, yep. Yeah, I I think I'll call that done there-ish. Um, but you can spend more time on this eye, just making it look better. Um, let's have a look at this left side here. We'll use numpad one to look at front view. This one actually looks pretty good, honestly. I just. I'm just going to do some small alterations just to make it look even better. Okay, we're just going to um, GZ, GZ, uh, GZ, 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 GZ. Okay, I'm going to move this one in a little bit. This one's a little bit too spiky. I don't like that. We want it to look kind of even. So G, Y to come out a little bit. Okay. And just G, G, Y. Oops, I pressed that. Okay, so I'm just pressing Control Z. Okay, looks good. And we'll have to do the nostrils as well. And just one thing you can do is you can sculpt 
you can sculpt this closer to the model. In fact, I will GY. Okay, that's looking good. I want it to be more natural. That brow line. Okay. Be careful not to edit the eyes. So you just want to, oops, you just want to edit the um, front part there. Not bad one. Okay. So we can just get this a little bit sorted. Okay. So this will look a lot better with a subdivision surface as well. So you don't need to worry too much about the shape as long as it looks generally okay, that's probably good enough. Okay, yeah, so now we just go to object mode and you have a look at zero. If I drag this to zero and I drag it to one, you can see it's a lot more circular and it looks a lot better with shade smooth and everything. Yeah, so it actually looks like it's an actual eye. So there's some small imperfections, but I'd say it's kind of okay-ish. Okay, so let's have a look at, let's make a new shape key and we'll also just fix the nostrils because there's a few things about the nostrils that we'll be clipping from my experience. Okay, so let's have a look at this here. Honestly, nobody's really going to be looking here, but, you know, I might as well, might as well fix out some of these. So this one needs to be lower a little bit. GZ, GZ, and then let's move it to the side here, GZ, upwards, okay, cool. Okay, should be this one here. So if I just move it up here, okay, that's looking better. So you can see that like this black, this black thing, this black gray thing, you can tell it's clipping uh, badly. Like, and this extra point, like it's so sharp, it's not supposed to be so, so sharp. So you can tell something's clipping here. So you want to move it just until it's not clipping basically. So yeah, okay, there's some other point that's connected to that. Okay, yeah, oops. Let's have a look in uh, wireframe view. So what's connected to this point? these three points. Okay, so this one should probably move over this way then. Okay, so because these three points. Okay, let me look at solid view. Yep, I think that's looking a little bit better. And this will help the general shape of the nostrils look better inside as well. If you just take the time to kind of just adjust them slightly, it will make them look a little bit better. Okay, so we'll move this one over. We're just moving everything over a little bit. GZ. Okay, cool. It is roughly not clipping well enough. Maybe just make this a little bit less sharp because we're looking in the nostril here. Okay, yep. Looks good. Okay, so there's nothing clipping, nothing black. Okay, I'll look at the other nostril. Okay, so let's have a look at this point here. Yeah, this point needs to be dragged upwards. And you need to be moved there. Just gonna move this one alongside that. Okay, something is obviously clipping here. Because we can see that it's kind of black, like over here-ish. Like either we're gonna kind of move it until it's not clipping. Let me just use wireframe mode, which might help sometimes to see which points are connected to it. Okay, so I'm just going to move that one. Okay. Okay, so you should be below, I think. Let me check. Um, okay, so this is kind of a little bit messed up. That's okay. So let me just move this one here. Move this one along. Move it along here. Probably move this one down a little bit. And move this one up. I'll move it around. Okay. So yeah. 
I'm just pressing G to move them as per usual. G X G okay G K G K G Z Z okay G Z move that down a little bit. Move all these down a little bit so it's more even. And we'll move maybe this one up a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look inside the nose. Yeah, that looks okay to me. So we look at it, look at it from this side. Might just do some slight alterations from the outside. Just to create a kind of nose shape. Like because we want a kind of um, against the wall. Okay, let me just make this a little bit more inwards. We can use some sculpting here as well. We can use a sculpt mode to sculpt it a little bit. I think I'm happy with that actually. Not too fast with this, but it looks pretty good to me. It looks okay to me, then I think it should be okay. Yep, so we've, we've kind of fixed the nostrils as well. So we have a before and after. Maybe just a touch the side here, maybe making this wall a little bit thicker, I'd say. And just by moving the points inwards, <clears throat> inwards a little bit. GY, GY, okay, cool. That looks good. Okay, so let me just have a look at this. Yep, overall this is pretty good. Okay, so I think I think that's pretty good. Okay, now let's just check it against the original near head. So if we check it against the original near head. I'll just hide that. Okay, so we can sculpt it a little bit more. And we'll probably do that, yeah. I'll probably sculpt it a little bit more to match. Other than that, I think that's the major problems kind of fixed. Um, I might do a little bit more editing of this one right here. Let me just correct it. Let me just bring it inwards a little bit. So I need to, if I want to edit this one, I need to go back a little bit. So I need to just bring it down. I just don't want it to be so prominent. Okay, so I'm just going to the corrected shape key. And yep, okay. Yep, that looks okay to me. Okay, yep. Might just bring this one down a little bit as well. Um, what we want to do from here is we just want to pretty much uh, sculpt it. So basically, what we're going to do is I'm just going to make a new shape key from all these other shape keys. So you know how I fixed the nostrils with this one. Um, I fixed the eyes with this one. Now I fixed the um, I fixed everything like uh, the neck and everything with this one. So I just want to because before we sculpt I just want a clean kind of surface to sculpt on. I don't want to sculpt on something that doesn't have let's say the ears corrected because if the if I don't have these corrected and I try to sculpt this area here um, it will cause some weird things to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust everything to one and I'm just gonna say new shape key new shape from mix. Okay so basically I Click this, new shape from mix. And I'm gonna call this combined, okay? And I'm just gonna adjust everything else to zero. And basically, as you can see here, like everything's messed up, the eyes are all messed up and everything. But if I just drag the shape key up to one, we can see everything's fixed, the eyes, the ears, everything. So yeah, so that's how you create a shape key from multiple shape keys. So now I'm just going to do a sculpt mode. So what I'm gonna do is 
Um, basically, so I think I might have dragged this JF up to the collection, uh, but that's all good. So you basically just drag it upwards, so then it's in this collection, so it's separate from these other meshes. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is we're going to unhide original near head, and I'm just going to try to. Uh, I can hide everything except just the head itself because that's all we want to sculpt. And let me just sculpt this. Okay, so I'm just going to use this uh, draw brush here. And actually, I'm just going to use the minus setting here. And I'm just going to turn the strength down to maybe 0.1-ish. Um, and we'll just try and... Wait, where is this fall off? Let me just try to get fall off fall off sphere sphere is fine and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, right bracket key let me in fact turn up turn on uh, screencast keys again so let me just use my right bracket key to make my my mouse a little bit wider and now and just make sure that this is on is on one okay so make sure it isn't on zero because if you you're on zero and you start sculpting you'll see that nothing happens but if you change it to one you can see when I sculpt, uh, things are starting to happen, okay? So what I wanna do is I just wanna sculpt to the point where I see them shimmering on top of each other. So I just wanna sculpt a little bit. Um, I've changed it to minus as well because uh, I'm trying to sculpt it inwards. But um, if you see some patches that are like kind of white, for instance, this patch here, you can change it to plus instead. And I can just sculpt the plus in because I want them shimmering on top of each other, basically. Um, so I'm just going to go around and just sculpt um, using the minus tool. Okay, so it's going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to, you don't need to be really accurate. You just want them roughly on top of each other. Okay, so um, I'm just using Control Z because I think I sculpted a little bit too much there. You can use the left bracket tool to kind of go in a little bit more, like to make your brush a little bit smaller so you can sculpt with more accuracy. Um, you can also turn up your strength at some points if you feel like you're too weak and you need some more strength. You can just kind of, yeah, just kind of sculpt like that. And let me just turn it down again because I don't probably need that much strength here. It's a little bit hard to sculpt it exactly, but we're going to do our best because this is just going to improve the overall look of the cheeks and stuff and just kind of make our model a little bit more accurate. Um, yeah, so just a tiny bit more. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So you can see that we're kind of sculpting the, uh, the skin colored area into the white colored area, uh, if you can see. So we want them kind of on top of each other, so it doesn't matter if we get like blotches in the middle. Um, in fact, that's kind of desirable because we want them kind of shimmering on top of each other. I've never really gotten the shimmering effect though, um, but you know, just kind of close is good enough. In fact, I might just turn up my strength a little bit because I'll probably go insane uh, if I don't. And yeah, okay, so you can see we're starting to get some of these areas a little bit more shimmery, if that kind of makes sense. Um, it's gonna be hard to be perfect, but just close enough is good. Close enough is Gucci. Just gonna keep on sculpting. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, okay. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm just clicking down. I'm just using my mouse here. I'm not actually doing anything special. Just using my mouse. You don't even need a pen tablet for this. Just sculpt. Sculpt as you can. Um, don't worry too much. Um, just moving around a little bit, moving my around my model. Oops, that might have been a little bit too much. I think I might have hold, held the shift key, so that might have made it do a little bit too much. And you should see that the we're kind of sculpting it inwards. Whoa, what the heck was that? Whoops. Um, um, uh, and it like when you use your shape, when you turn this shape key from zero to one, you should see that it kind of goes in a little bit. Okay, so and I'm also gonna do some of the ears as well because the ears looked a tiny bit weird and I wasn't really satisfied with that. So I'm just going to, so you can see that it's not really doing much. So I'm just gonna turn up my strength to maybe 0.1-ish and I'm just gonna sculpt a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more, 0.2 feels like it'd be good. 
just so then I can start to see them shimmering on top of each other because I wasn't happy with the top of the ears so much. Uh, the top of the ears was kind of irking me a little bit. In fact, let me just bring it up a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Just do your thing. Do your thing. And just go in a little bit. Because I want to go in until I can see the white because that means that I'm starting to kind of have the right shape. Especially that these corners right here, like these top corners, I kind of want those to be right. And same with this bottom corner right here, because I kind of want these to be like on point basically. And let me use shift tilde so then I can go, oops, I'm so fast. I'm just gonna go a little bit slower by using the, uh, the uh, scrolling backwards on my mouse wheel and using WSD after using a uh, uh, fly mode. And I'm just going to do -do -do -do, sculpt a little bit. Maybe I'll make my brush a little bit wider so then uh, you don't have to sit here and watch me all day. Just going through this. Okay. We're going good. I think we're roughly getting the shape. We don't need it all to be white. That's not kind of the point. The bigger point is just kind of um, just kind of having them overlaid each other. So just um, roughly like splotches is good enough, really. Okay, we're going good. Okay. In fact, I'll just take some of these areas here. In fact, I probably don't need such a strong brush right here, even just like 0 0.1 ish will do it. So let me just sculpt a little bit more. I'll just sculpt a little bit and then I'll just bring it round. Sculpt my model a little bit more, and then what will I do? Just keep sculpting, just some of these areas, just until they're shimmering on top of each other. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see, let's see. Okay, and I can shift to the plus mode here if I want to make these areas kind of pop out a little bit. If I want to make the neck kind of pop out a little bit in these white areas, these because these are completely white, and that shouldn't be the case. I should have a little bit of, of um, skin color poking out, if that's okay. So we'll just get a little bit of poking out right here. Um, and yes, we're just comparing it to the original model and basically sculpting it against that, if that makes sense. In fact, let me just turn up my brush a little bit. Okay. Okay, 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 looking good. Okay. Probably won't sculpt too much here, actually. I'll just control Z a couple of times. I think that should be roughly okay-ish. Um, this should be more like it, I feel like. Don't worry about the extreme areas, just focus on the head and stuff, the forehead, these parts here. Yep, I'd say I'd say they're on top of each other pretty well right now, um, and we might just do the lips a little bit. So just maybe using changing it to minus mode, and I might change down my strength a little bit, and just make sure that. Uh, in fact, I might you change it to add here. Might have the red lips just come out a little bit here. Same with here, just to maybe plump plump them up, have them shimmering a little bit. Oops, uh, maybe not that much. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, I'd say we're pretty much okay here. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll just say I'm satisfied with this. Um, okay, so what else do we need to do? Okay, so we just need to move the eyes and the jaw as the final thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select these eyes. So it's actually pretty easy to select. Just select this, um, Let's uh, unselect, uh, hide this head, and let's go back to this one here. And in fact, let's just see the product of our efforts. So you can see um, it's actually just sculpted inwards a little bit. So the lips and a lot of other parts have been sculpted inwards just a little bit. Uh, has it even been sculpted inwards? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that has been. Um, yeah, so it's been sculpted inwards because we were on the combined shape key. Um, so what we're gonna do on this combined shape key is we're just gonna move 
the eyes a little bit. So let me just change to, by just pressing W to go to the tweak tool, to the tweak tool. And let me select something on the eyes, press L and press L again. Oops. Uh, press L again once I hover over some black vertices on the eye because there's multiple layers of eye and you wanna make sure that you select them all. In order to check that, just press G and make sure you're selecting the whole eye there. That's cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it downwards a little bit. So G, Z to move it downwards. In fact, I'm gonna to go to numpad one view, make sure I'm in the right mode. And I'm just gonna make sure that the center of the eye is aligned with the center of this thing right here. Okay, cool. And now we're just gonna make sure that the, the center of the eye is just brought a, a little bit forwards. So I'm gonna go G, Y, just bring it forwards a little bit. Uh, so then it's kind of sitting in the socket nicely. Okay, looks good, looks good. Okay, we're just also gonna make sure that this is sitting in the socket nicely by pressing L, L again, and just press G, make sure it's move, you're moving around the whole eye there. And let's just move it downwards by just pressing numpad one to go to front view, G, Z. And yep, that looks good. And now uh, G, Z a little bit more maybe, and just move it to the right a little bit. Oops, I'm moving the wrong way, G, X. Okay, just to move it there. And then now I'll just move it a little bit forward. So G, uh, Y, okay? So I just wanna kind of fit it in that socket without clipping because you can see this is starting to clip right here. So we kinda of wanna move it a little bit backwards, not too much, but we don't want it like um, not fitting in that eye socket whatsoever, like the previous one. Okay, so, and make sure that you while you're doing this, you're, you've clicked the combined thing, the combined uh, uh, shape key, and it's on, not, it's on one. Okay, so yep. Yeah. That looks correct. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure I adjust the jaw a little bit. So let me just, um, let me just grab the teeth in fact. I might just grab the teeth. Um, so how am I gonna grab that? I think I'm just gonna grab select. So I selected all the teeth. Um, I might just Okay, actually, no, no, I'll adjust that on the actual, on my working model. Okay, so, because that's kind of difficult to adjust on this model. Um, Cause we haven't, we can't open the jaw with this one. So, okay, uh, that's all done now. Okay, so this is done and we can actually transfer this shape to our working model. But first I kind of made a mistake cause you can actually just delete this Victoria 8 with NGV8, uh, this one here, so you can just, right click on this Victoria with NGV8 tutorial and just delete hierarchy. Okay, so it'll basically delete the Victoria 8 one. So why? Because actually we need to import, um, we need to import uh, this uh, other one, like this, the working model. So how do we do that? We go back to the DAS importer. So press N, DAS importer. And what you wanna do here is you want to basically um, you want to uh, press easy import DAS and go to your scenes again. Remember, if you don't know where your scenes are, just open up DAS Studio and try to save a scene. So I'll just show you just in case you haven't favorited your scenes folder. So I'll just go file, save, and then I'll just click in this address bar, press control C, and then to copy it, I'll bring it into here. And I'll press Control V, Enter. Okay, so now I'm in the right folder. So what I want to do is I want to get the Victoria 8 with NGV8 tutorial.duff thing. Um, but what I want to do is I want to make sure that I import the morphs with it. So I'm just going to go face units, expressions, visemes, facts, um, facts, expressions, bodies, uh, JCMs. We don't need flexions. So transfer shape keys is for... Uh, if you have clothing, but it doesn't matter if you don't have clothing um, as well, because um, it, it doesn't actually make any difference. It just transfers the shape keys to clothing. Um, next, um, don't use merge geografts, don't use merge lashes or convert widgets. Uh, make sure make all bones poseable is enabled, so some of the bones won't be locked. And just change this to MHX and make sure finger IK is enabled. Okay, so yep. These will be the things that we need. 
and you can just press easy import DAS and you'll just wait. So you will have to wait a considerable amount of time, perhaps even close to uh, five minutes. So just uh, wait for it to happen. Um, okay, not, maybe not five minutes, but like maybe like three minutes. So just don't worry if your blender seems like it's frozen, it's just thinking and importing all those morphs and that can take quite a considerable amount of time. Okay, so it has all imported, which is great. So we've got um, the Victoria 8 with, with things. So if you just click on the skeleton itself, you should see that you now have these extra morphs. So the visemes are pretty much uh, vowels used to lip sync. We've got the expressions and other things. Um, so what we're gonna do though, is we're going to um, transfer our shape over to the uh, Victoria 8 uh, meshes. So we're gonna transfer um, our shape. Okay, yeah, so basically, um, we wanna click on the GAF wrapped mesh, and then we want to con control, uh, hold the control key, and click on the Victoria 8 mesh uh, that we just imported from Daz. So that should be cl uh, selected second. You can see that uh, the Victoria 8 mesh is the active selection. So make sure if you if you need to just press control again and uh, click the Victoria 8 mesh, make sure it is selected second. Okay, from here, what we can do is we can just go to this, uh, uh, this object data properties and we can click on the shape key specials and just go join as shapes. Okay, um, so you should see if you scroll down to the bottom of the list now, you have this GAF wrapped um, shape key. So if we just adjust this to one, you should see um, that uh, your Victoria 8 mesh kind of just falls to the ground on the floor right there, um, which is okay. It's because the X rotations are wrong. I'm gonna try to rotate it, right? So if I click on the mesh and I try to rotate it, nothing happens. So why does nothing happen? Because all the rotations and locations are locked. So you wanna click on the mesh and you wanna make sure um, object properties, uh, you wanna click on this uh, orange object properties uh, thing and you want to just click down and drag to make sure that all these things are unlocked So from here you can just go R X to rotate it in the X axis 90 Okay, so we just typed in 90 and we can see that it's actually perfect pretty much um, We transferred our our thing uh, pretty much perfectly. So let me just hide My uh, wrapped kind of thing and you can see we have this thing here um, I'm just gonna move down these eyebrows. I'm gonna make a new shape key when I'm in object mode. And I'm gonna call this uh, near head. Okay, and uh, let me just change this from GAF wrapped to near head. Okay, so this is gonna be the near shape key, I guess, the near head <laughs> shape key. And this one is gonna be the near head. We're gonna drag it to one. And then I'm going to make my changes by going GZ to bring it down and then I'm gonna go GY to bring it outwards. Okay, so it's in the right place now. Um, I'm just gonna adjust it slightly though. So I'm just going to go G, um, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna select these one by one and I'm just gonna adjust them. So what I did, what I did is I selected a thing here, a vertex, then I pressed L to select the linked area. Okay, so oops, there is actually two of them there. I need to press L again. So let me just, Oops, select L again, uh, L again. <laughs> uh, while I hover my mouse over a vertex, then I should just be able to move it into the right place until it's like right over her eye there and it follows the curve. Yeah, I think that's good enough for me. Um, now let me just move this bottom one here by pressing L and just L on this and also L on this here. And let me just move them uh, onto the side, I guess, to follow this kind of um, eye there. Okay, that looks good enough to me. Okay, this isn't actually connecting up to the eye, <laughs> I just realized. Um, let me just use proportional editing here. So I'll just select, in fact, I'll just select everything around here just using the shift. In fact, I'll use a C, the circle select, and I'll just uh, select through here. In fact, I'll enable wireframe. Oops, I'll press enter. Um, yeah, actually, I'll just shift select this as well. Okay, and then I'll just turn on uh, proportional editing. 
it's just so I can kind of move that. Uh, so I'll press G and then I'll uh, scroll inwards with my mouse just to make sure my sphere of influence is a little bit smaller. Then I'll zoom in and I'll just, I'll just make my sphere of influence a little bit bigger than that because I do need it to be a little bit bigger. Um, okay. Okay, um, actually, let me turn off proportional editing first and let me move them over top here because I want them to be connected. Can I just, can I just, can I just hide these first? I'm going to hide, I'm just going to go L, L, L and just press H. So I'm going to hide it for now so then it doesn't, it doesn't get affected by this. And let me just turn on proportional editing. And now I should, if I just go G and I turn, turn up my sphere of influence and I just have it attached to the eye itself. So it looks a little bit more legit, I should say. Um, yep, yeah, okay, so it's actually connected there. It's not like they'll look that close anyway, but you know, just for perfectionist's sake. Okay, and let me just go Alt H to unhide that extra part there. So you can see that we haven't affected that. Now we'll do the same to this eye right here. So let me turn off proportional editing. Uh, I'll select this here, I'll press L and I'll press L again when hovering my cursor over a vertex, a black vertex. You can see um, that we've selected both layers of eyebrows there. So now I can just move it around there-ish. Okay, actually that kind of fits kind of well. It actually adheres to the skin. Did I actually do that with my previous one? Can I check? Yeah, I did, I did. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, that's probably why this one right here wasn't actually, because I didn't actually adjust it to the actual eye. That's a good point. Uh, let me just go L and let me just move it to actually fit on the eyelid. Uh, then again, I don't know if I like that. It's a little bit sketchy, I should say. You know what, I kind of like it in its previous position, but I'll just um, change a few things here. So I'll just turn on proportional editing. I'll select both sides here. I'll turn on proportional editing and I'll just drag it, drag it upwards a bit, I think. Yeah, that looks more, more legit, I'd say. And let me just zoom in a little bit and let me just, oops. Let me just zoom in a little bit, I said, and let me just drag these down just a little bit so they're a little bit less influenced by that. Okay. Okay. Wait, let me just see what happened. Wait a second, how much did I drag it? I dragged it up quite a bit, in fact. Um, let me just go, let me just hide this area first again so then it isn't affected. And then, then let me do that transformation. Okay. Okay. Good enough, yeah. I'll say that's good enough. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. Okay, let's do this other eye. So I think the bottom part's okay to me. Um, it's more that top part, which is kind of irking me a little bit. Oh no, actually that's kind of fine, honestly. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of fine. Okay, uh, now let me just check it out in material preview mode actually, just to see if that looks okay-ish. Because I'm not sure if her eyelashes should be above. Um, but honestly, you can kind of make these changes um, just just subjectively, yeah, no, that looks okay. Yeah, that definitely looks okay to me. Okay, cool. I'll call that okay for that. So basically you can turn off this to kind of have them, you can turn on and off this near head shape key. So we can actually transfer this shape key between, um, between Victoria 8 bodies and it would just work perfectly fine. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, Okay, 
In fact, we could even like attach this uh, shape key, to, these shape keys just to a Genesis 8 uh, female body mesh. So you don't actually need that. But anyway, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So we're just converting, we convert it down from this other one. Um, oops, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so we have this near head. It has a near head shape. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transfer the textures because we have to transfer the textures here because the textures aren't right. So in order to do that, we're just gonna go uh, save this. I'm gonna go file, export, OBJ again. And we're gonna go geometry, turn off apply modifiers. Remember, you can also just delete this subsurf, which I will do just to be safe. Uh, and so make sure that you're just selecting the uh, body, the body mesh, and I'll just go file, uh, I'll go export OBJ. And I'll just export um, uh, the, the um, I'll call this near uh, GAF, so GAF um, textures. So before textures, I guess. Okay, uh, for textures. Okay. And I might as well also uh, export uh, this head. So I'll, I'll click on the, the near original head, file, export uh, OBJ, and I'll call this uh, near uh, head for textures, just so we don't get confused. Wait, oh wait, actually I made a mistake here. Remember I didn't click on selection only and did I make sure keep vertex? Okay, so I didn't do two key settings. So let me just redo that. In fact, let me just go back to the um, the Victoria 8 mesh and let me go file, export, OBJ. And let me just make sure it's selection only, uh, turn off apply modifiers and keep vertex order on. And let me just overwrite GA8F for textures. Okay. And now let me do the same with the near head. So I just go file, export, OBJ, and I go, uh, I go near head for textures, basically. Let me just make it not one. And just make sure it's selection only, and make sure keep vertex orders on and apply modifiers is off. Okay, cool. So now we can just open up wrap again. And we're just going to have to make um, this one right here. We're going to have to make this uh, setup right here for our, our textures thing, te texture transfer. Okay, so let's just make that real quick. Um, and then I'll show you where to get the texture. So basically, we just need the head texture uh, from the mesh. Um, so let me just go and get load image. So you can uh, so press tab and just go load, load image, and we'll grab this here. And I'll press tab again, I'll create a load geom node. I'll, I will also create another load geom node on the right here. And we're gonna get a transfer texture node. So we're just gonna basically uh, transfer these textures um, between meshes. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this extrapolate textures, this set textures. Okay. Honestly, I'm not actually sure what this te set textures node does here, <laughs> but I'm going to assume it does something. Uh, if not, I'm not sure why Rigid3D put that one there. I do ex know what the other ones do though. So I'm just going to connect these up. So connect this load image to load geom. And let me just rename this by right click rename. I'm going to call this uh, Nia head. I'm going to right click rename this one. And I'm going to call this G88F. Okay, cool. I'm going to uh, drag this uh, blue input from near head to transfer texture this one to the second one and Now I just need to put this transfer texture into here and I can just put this extrapolate texture to set texture and I can move this one to uh, a Save image and just drag this one to here. So I think set texture may like set the texture on the on the mesh, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so what we're gonna need is we're gonna need the near head. Okay, so the near head, uh, let's just grab that. So I'm just going to find it. So it's in my Blender projects, projects near rigid. Uh, and then I'm just going to find the 
near head for textures. And then this one here, I'm just going to find the G8F for textures. Okay, so if we go back to the uh, viewport 3D, we should see that it's in here. <laughs> it is kind of flipped the wrong way. It's a little bit weird. Um, 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 uh... No, I think that's fine. I think that should be fine. <laughs> we'll see if it works. I think it's. I think I needed to apply that. Um, so actually, before I do that, one second. Let me just unhide this. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this GF and I'm just going to click on this mesh here. I'm going to press Control A and apply all transforms. And then I'm going to go File, Export, uh, OBJ. And I'm just going to make sure selection only is on. I'm going to uh, make sure apply modifiers is off and keep vertex order is on. Okay, so now I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to make this GF for textures. Um, OBJ. And so let me just do that again. So let me just grab this, make sure it's GAF for textures, reload, and let me turn it on. Okay, that's strange. That's strange. Um, well, as long as it works, I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any concerns about it. Um, okay, so now we just need to find what the image is. So this is kind of a Unreal Engine thing, um, but if we click on the head itself, so we click on the near head itself. Then we go to the materials tab. So you should see um, that there's M-I-N-K head O-O. So that's kind of the one we kind of need to worry about because the eyelashes, we're just gonna delete them and we're gonna replace them with the Victoria 8 eyelashes. So I'm just gonna double click on this material right here, Control C. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm going to put it into here. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is go to Blender, Blender Projects, I'm going to go into my folder where I exported the textures from Unreal Engine. And I'm just going to find search here. So you can see I get this props.txt file. And the one we care about is this diffuse, which is the color. So it is what gives this texture gives the model its color. Okay, so we're not going to use the ORM or N. You can do this, you can do the same thing with the ORM or N, but honestly, I don't think we need them. So I'm just going to copy this texture here. And I'm just going to put it out in, I'm going to put it into uh, original textures. I'm going to make a new folder, original textures. And I'm just going to put this texture into here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to wrap. And I'm going to, in the load image node, I'm just going to grab this original textures TNK thing. Okay, so yeah, so we can see that, that I've now applied this texture here to the head. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this texture to the body. So I'm just going to go and I'm just going to uh, just go save image. So I'm going to compute current frame and we're going to see if this works. What is it got? What is going on? Oh yes, wait, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I need to actually select a folder to save it in. So I need to go to Blender projects and I need to search for this and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this wrapped textures. So this is a method to change the textures, to stretch the textures um, for the head. So I'm going to go head, head. Um, I'm going to change this to probably PNG actually. I'm going to change it to PNG. So head diffuse. So wrapped head diffuse. I want to save this and I'm going to go compute current frame. Uh, I think that worked, question mark. Wait, let me just go to the viewport 2D and let me click on the uh, transfer texture node. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to use the G8F wrapped. So let me just uh, hide all the Victoria 8 things. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to actually use this this GAF wrapped, it seems like, to transfer the textures first. So let me go file, export, uh, OBJ, and I'll just go G8F uh, for textures, change it, this one, make sure it's selection only, geometry, make sure apply modifiers is off and keep vertex orders is off. And let me just export OBJ. And now let me just 
uh, change this G8F here to G8F for textures OBJ and reload it. Okay, and let me just go to here. Okay, yeah, this is better. Okay, so this is what I should see in the viewport 2D, which is the transfer 2D textures. So the transfer texture basically stretches the texture from the near head um, and stretches it to the G8F mesh. Since the topology is already alike, um, it's basically a really good and easy kind of thing. Now this extra extrapolate node basically makes sure there's no seams at the edges. It just uses like a gradient, um, it uses a blur to create a gradient. So it, there's no sharp edges at the edge of textures or the transition of textures. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go save image, the rigid tutorial, and I'm just gonna move it into the wrapped textures. And we're, call, we're gonna call this wrapped head diffuse. And I just saved it and I press compute current frame. So that's gonna give me my first kind of thing that I can kind of change. So let me just hide this G8F wrapped and let me uh, actually uh, get my working model out. Okay, so I have my working model. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, so I'm going to basically add these textures in. So let me just go to the shading tab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new material for each of these. So I'm just gonna, uh, kind of close these by moving to, moving in the corner, top left, just delete both of these things. Okay, now I'm just gonna make this one much bigger because I really don't need the other one. And let me just go N, oh no, I don't need N, I just need this thing here. So I'm just gonna create a new face wrapped material. So I'm just gonna press new, and I'm gonna call this face, face wrapped. So I'm just gonna grab the image texture I have. Uh, let me just minimize it. And let me grab uh, uh, the original textures. And let me grab this uh, wrapped textures. I'm gonna drag in this wrapped head diffuse. Okay, it's, go it's gonna be on sRGB and it's gonna plug straight into the base color of this principled BSDF. Okay, so this one is pretty much uh, done already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select, I'm gonna go to edit mode. So I'm just gonna go to edit mode. I'm going to press Shift A, wait, it's not Shift A, Alt A to deselect everything. And then I'm just going to click on this face and just press on select. So I select everything that is the face, the vertices that are face, and I assign them to this face wrapped one instead. So what you will see is amazingly, we have changed to the near head uh, texture, which is pretty cool. Um, but what we also wanna do is we wanna go to this face material here, and we actually wanna select all these textures here like this, in fact, let me just copy them in a couple of waves. So I'm just gonna use the sh hold the shift key to select these nodes here, these four nodes, right click, copy, and put them into my face wrapped kind of thing, right click, paste. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of uh, drag this normal from bump into normal there. Okay, so we're gonna use the high quality textures from the Victoria 8 um, model um, to kind of supplement the other textures. Okay, so we have this one here. Okay, um, now we're also going to grab the other textures here. So I'm going to grab the, um, so I'm going to go face. I don't need the eyebrows because we, we're just going to use the near eyebrows instead. So what I'm going to use uh, when it kind of continues loading is I'm just going to use, I'm not going to use the diffuse either because the diffuse is the base color that we kind of replaced. So I'm just gonna use the, so that's the bump. I'm gonna use shift. So I'm gonna use this uh, subsurface scattering node. So that's used um, to scatter light. So basically it shows blood underneath the skin. So let me also copy the, uh, the face. So the SSS, the, the subsurface scattering, the specular. And let me also copy the, where is it? Translucent, uh, translucency. So I'll, cop I'll just shift, select all these nodes, right click, copy, and I'll bring them into the face wrapped kind of thing. Let me right click, paste. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to drag this specular into uh, the specular right here. And I'm also gonna drag this one here in this, to this side. And I'm gonna connect this BSDF from the principal BSDF into cycles. And I'm gonna connect 
uh, this cycles to surface, okay? And what I'm going to do is, you can see it becomes really white and kind of stuff, so that's kind of ugly. So we're going to want to replace this um, with, um, so instead of this value here, you can kind of just play with it, but if you just, if you see like, uh, <laughs> you're not like that, if you use like zero, it's no effect. So 0 0.2 is a good kind of number to have a little bit of subsurface scattering. And that's kind of how I do all my materials for cycles, because it'll look good in cycles. But you will notice that the lips look weird, and so do the does the rest of the body. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to keep doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to wrap, and we're gonna, just going to change this transfer. So we're gonna change the UV, the U thing to one. And so this is gonna give us the head area, the rest of the head area. We're gonna to have to blend the rest of the body, um, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, uh, press save image. So I'm just gonna press compute current frame. Okay. So basically, oops, oops, that was a mistake. Oops, let me change this to zero again. And let me just say compute current frame again to make sure that that texture wasn't destroyed. And now let us uh, change this to one. And now let me just change this name here to wrapped torso diffuse. Okay, and now let's compute current frame. Okay, um, so basically this will give us the torso kind of area where it connects to the head. I know it looks really weird uh, in material preview, but don't worry, it will look good in a couple of seconds. Nia will stop looking like a mime in a couple of seconds, I promise. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna have to create another material. So I'm just gonna press the plus icon, press new, and I'm just gonna call this torso wrapped. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab uh, this torso material right here, and I'm just going to grab, um, in fact, let me just do the diffuse first. So let me just press tab, and I'll just press select. So I select the whole torso area, and then I'm just going to assign it to my new material here. So it's gonna be white first, but now we're going to kind of change it. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to uh, put in this wrapped torso diffuse, and I'm just going to drag it into this base color. And you'll see there's gonna be a problem. So basically, when we go layout to the layout tab, um, let me just let me just disable the um, subsurface scattering by putting it to zero first for the fact so it doesn't doesn't look weird. Okay, so this looks okay, but you'll see that on the arms it starts getting like really weird. So it starts like losing all the textures. So what we need to do is just for this neck area here, like this neck area here is oops. Let me just use the W. Uh, so this neck area here basically is completely okay. So this neck area is fine, but anything below it must be a different material. So we're gonna have to do some material trickery to kind of solve that. Don't worry, it's gonna be easy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, so there's gonna be one texture from Rigid 3D, uh, this texture bake mask um, that I'm going to put in the description below. Okay, but I'm just gonna copy it into my other folder and drag it into, um, into this one here for the torso wrapped. So basically, um, you don't need, really need to know how it works too much, but you can just use this on non-color. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the torso here. And I'm just gonna grab the, I like pretty much all these textures here. So I'm just gonna go shift and just grab all these te textures because I'm gonna have to use all of them anyway. And this translucency, and I'll just copy all those nodes and I'll just put it into torso wrapped, just click paste, uh, right click paste. And we're just going to focus on the D texture first, so the diffuse. Uh, let me just move everything else aside a little bit. Okay, because just for now, we don't really care too much. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm just going to plug in this. So I'm gonna use a, a mix RGB. So basically with a mix RGB node, you want to mix like whatever's going on top into the second color, so color two. Okay, so you wanna go, because uh, we wanna mix, um, so let me just show you what this looks like. So if you use the Node Wrangler, so if you use Edit Preferences, and you have Node Wrangler enabled, Node Wrangler, so just make sure that this is enabled, it comes default with Blender, but use Control Shift click here. You'll see that, um, let me just Control Shift click here. 
So this one is the default uh, texture that comes with um, uh, comes with uh, Victoria 8. And we kind of want to use this, um, but we want to use it at everywhere below the neck. So let's just use this one here, this mix node. And we're just going to use this texture bake mask as where to put each one. So you can see here that we actually have the texture in the correct place. So um, if you use this as the FAC here, basically color two will only exist where this mask is black and where it's white, um, this second, this first one here, um, this first one here will exist. Wait, let me just see, did I get that right? Let me just make sure that I got that right. Uh, let me just go to the torso wrapped and let me just see if I got that right. Texture bake mask, Victoria B torso. Okay, actually, so I, I think I got it the wrong way around because, wait, okay, so this one needs to go on top. And this one here, the torso D. Yeah, so the torso D needs to go on top, actually. <laughs> My fault, because everywhere that is is black, is going to be uh, the the Victoria D original texture, and everywhere that is white on this texture here is going to be the um, the uh, the other texture that we wanted. So you can see that the colors are now correct, which is great. So now we're just going to plug in this color from the mix RGB into there. We're going to redo this BSDF to that and just delete it. Okay, so now we have this here. But what we need to do here is we need to adjust the color. So if I just go back to object mode here, we need to adjust this color to match because you can see that this is a really, really white kind of thing. Um, so basically what you need to do is you need to use a this RGB curves node and a darken, a darken node right here. So we're just going to, I'm gonna use the RGB curves node right here. So I'm just gonna grab an RGB curves, RGB curves, and we're just going to put it into this thing right here. And we're just gonna mess around with it. So I'm just gonna see what kind of works. So if I add some red in here, that looks like it would be a little bit better. Let's try to minus some green. Yep, so we're getting some good color here. And we minus some blue. Okay, so we minus some blue. Yep, okay, that's looking good. Okay, let me just check what I did here. So I did a minus curve there, I did a I did a green, yep, and I just added. So let me just bring down this blue even more. So maybe around there-ish. Okay, so this is roughly, because we're getting more of that orange, that orangey look, as you can see there, if I minus some from G. So this is pretty much actually already very close to matching, but I do want to, I do want to uh, add a darken node. Uh, so, a, so basically this is a mix RGB, and I'm just going to add a darken node after it. So I'm just going to make it darken. I'm going to set it to darken. Um, so this is kind of an individual thing for each um, for each uh, texture. You'll have to kind of mess around with it. So the key nodes that you want to use are RGB nodes, a darken node, uh, or even a lighten node if your skin color is, needs to be lighter that you're blending into, or uh, even like a gradient, so a color ramp, a color ramp node. So a color ramp node can help quite a bit as well. Um, but in this case, uh, so you can just add a stop in between and you can just uh, kind of put it into here. You can put it as a skin, skin color you want. So this will preserve it. In fact, let me just show you what it does. If I just put it in here and I just kind of delete this darkened node and let me just put it into here. Okay, so you can see that I can drag this up or down to make it lighter or brighter. Um, yep, so, yep, but in this case, it isn't really helping too much, I'd say. Let's see if I can, in fact, let me drag it all the way to the left. I might add another stop in between, and let me just drag it to the right-ish. Yeah, but in, in this case, I don't think the color ramp node is going to help. So I'm just going to press Control Z in a couple of times and just use the darken node because I found it that it would work in this case. 
So let me just drag it down a little bit, maybe to, let's have a look, to a dark, let me just copy the hex value that I found here, um, because I found from experimentation, if I just use this, yeah, that's kind of good enough. Let's have a look at this RGB though. If I can just kind of blend this in a little bit more, just a touch more, because I think it's a bit orange, I'd say. Yeah, so just maybe just that much, just to make it a little bit less noticeable. Okay, so that looks kind of fine now. So now we can see that this torso is all good. So we're just gonna add in the bump node into normal. So normal here. And I'm just gonna add in the translucency, in fact, like at the end here. I'm gonna drag the specular into specular. So specular into specular of the principal BSDF. Okay, so it's starting to look more legit. Okay, and let me just put in the DAS translucency. Uh, sorry, whoops, let me drag it into cycles and drag this into surface. Okay, um, I just found from experimentation that these settings kind of seem to work. Let me make this a 0 0.2. Okay, and yeah, so we can see that it's starting to work out. So let me just change this face to 0 0.2 as well. So don't worry, it'll, it'll look weird in EV, but it'll look better in cycles. So when we change it to cycles and have it as GPU compute, it'll look much better. Okay, uh, so let's just do the final materials. So we just need to do the lips wrapped and kind of thing. So let me just press new, change it to lips wrapped because we do need to change the lips a little bit. Okay. Because we need to actually for the lips wrapped, we can wait. Let me just check what I did for this again. So lips wrapped face s. Okay, what did I use for the face wrapped here? Face s s. Yep. In fact, for the lips wrapped area, we can just use, copy the thing from the face wrapped. So let me just press A to select all the nodes, right click, copy, and put it into the lips wrap. So just press A and delete everything and just right click, paste. And then you'll see that um, we need to assign it though. So let me just go lips wrapped. Let me find lips. And let me go to edit mode by pressing tab and just press select. And we wanna assign it to this new lips wrapped material. And you can see that it's starting to actually look natural, which is great to see. Okay, and now we just need to do the arms and the legs and the gens actually. So don't forget about the gens even though they're hidden. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just going to find uh, the arms here. I'm gonna create a new material. I'm gonna call it arms wrapped. Um, yep, yeah, so for this one here, we're basically gonna be using the same material as arms here. So we're not gonna be even changing any of this. We're just going to be doing, we're just gonna be changing one small thing. So I'm just going to, and we're gonna be changing the eye color uh, as well, but let me just copy all this first. So copy all these nodes, press right click, copy, and I'm gonna put them into arms wrapped. Okay, so we're just gonna be putting it into the principled BSDF because I found that uh, much easier to work with um, in general. So let me just put it into cycles, put this material output node there. Okay. Okay, so this S is going to go into specular, but let's just disconnect. Um, let's disconnect this one from here and put this into the normal here. Uh, let me also uh, go to the torso and copy all these nodes here. So copy the RGB node and this darkened node. So just hold shift, right click copy and put it into the arms wrapped, okay? So we're just gonna put it right here. Okay, so, and I'm just gonna grab this D node and just put it through both of these changes that we did. So I'm just going to press Alt so if you, have, if you have Node Wrangler, you can go Alt, right click, and you can basically copy, uh, drag the color into the color there, and Alt, right click to put it into there as well. And you can drag this one 
to be there. But you can just drag it normally, honestly, if you don't have um, Node Wrangler. So you can see that the, the arms are not changing color. So why is that? That's pretty simple because we haven't actually assigned the material. So select the material, go to edit mode by pressing tab. And now just press select and we're gonna assign it to the arms wrapped material. Okay, um, wait a sec. That should be okay. All right, this one should be 0 0.2. That's why that's the setting that I forgot. And let me just drag this one into specular. Okay, and we can drag these ones downwards a little bit, in fact. Okay, so you can see that the body is actually starting to blend in quite well, and it will look fantastic in cycles, I'm telling you. So we're just gonna have to do the legs and the, the legs and the um, gen. So let's just do those real quick. Let's add a new material called legs wrapped. Legs wrapped. And I like kind of keeping the normal materials intact, if that makes sense, uh, just because um, it kind of makes my job easier. Um, so just in case if I ever need to go back, so I, I still have the original materials. So legs wrapped. You can also change the import setting to principled, but the principled uh, import is not very good uh, with with uh, with the diffeomorphic add-on, uh, at least not or uh, not as of 1.6.1. It's kind of not great. Okay, so let me also grab this translucency, this data translucency node, copy it, paste it into here. Let's drag this into cycles. Uh, okay. And I'll drag cycles to surface. And then I'll just drag this SSS into color. I'll drag this one. So we need to copy, remember these two nodes here. So I'll just copy these two, copy, and I'll just paste them. Cause that's kind of just the color shift. These RGB curves and this darkened node is this color shift basically. So I'm gonna drag it into base color. Um, yep, and just make sure this is 0 0.2. Yeah, everything's fine. Let me just drag this into specular. Okay, so the advantage with using some of these textures is that, I'll, I'll just show it to you in a couple of seconds after I go select and I just go and I assign it to the legs wrapped material. So the advantage of actually using some of these materials is if we zoom in, have a look, they were using the Victoria 8 really high quality textures, right? So that's amazing. So we don't need to actually, so it adds those textures like free of charge, which is really great in fact, especially if the game models don't have high quality textures, uh, Victoria 8 does. Okay, so now we're just going to do the gens and then we're gonna do the irises. So the irises are the most important part because you can notice that she has the wrong eye color. She should have blue eyes, but we will change that real quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the gens real quick. So I'm just gonna go make a new materials, gens wrapped. Okay, so actually I'm gonna go find the gens. Oh yeah, sorry, the gens are right here on the new gens for Victoria 8. In fact, so I'll make the material here actually. So gens wrapped. I'll type in gens wrapped, we'll use this material. And I'll just, so it's actually just a copy of the torso. Um, so if you realize that, you can actually just copy the torso uh, material into this. So you can just basically find the torso wrapped material. Just press A, copy, right click copy and put it into gens wrapped. So you can just delete this, uh, copy it there. We can actually delete it from there and you'll notice that it should be on this one here. And we'll just uh, go to edit mode, select everything here, and we'll change or we'll assign it to this gens wrapped material. Okay, so we've done all the materials except these eyes. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, that's pretty cool that we pretty much have just the eyes left. So the eyes are just the irises. So we just need to change this iris color. Okay, so we could just use this and we could use like a color ramp in between or something. Um, but uh, my favorite, wait, actually, let me try using a color ramp. I haven't actually tried doing using using this. So if I just use a color ramp node and I just press plus and I add in a, let's say, and let me just change it to a blue. Okay, so it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't really work. Um, 
<laughs> but it's kind of funny. You can kind of use it. <laughs> if you wanted to give her like kind of like red eyes, that could be one way to do it with the color ramp. Um, but anyway, we're not going to be using that method. Basically, what we need to do here is we need to find, like we need to find our original NK head kind of thing. And we need to find basically what was the eye texture. So I know for sure that it's it's actually part of the um, it's part of the base color texture. So let me just create a new material and let me call it iris wrapped. Okay, so I'll call this iris wrapped. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize and I'm just gonna original textures. I'm gonna grab this one right here. And I'm gonna put it into base color. Okay, so basically from here, I'm just gonna grab my irises thing. Gonna, gonna go to edit mode, make sure everything is selected by pressing Alt H and then just press select to select the irises because that's what gives it the color. Then I'm gonna assign it to this uh, iris wrapped material. So what you'll see is, you'll see that the material looks really weird. That's not like an eye texture at all. Um, so <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the UV editing tab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to NK uh, head BC01. So I can actually use any of these, honestly, uh, BC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make sure that the, um, that just the eyes are selected. So I'm just gonna go to the materials um, and just select the irises wrapped material, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go to object data properties and I'm gonna, do the, gonna go to the UV maps and I'm gonna add a new UV map. And I'm gonna call this eyes uh, UV map, eyes UV, okay? And from here, I'm just gonna click on this second one, make sure the eyes UV is selected. And so I just press A to select all these here. I zoom out and I press G to move them to over here. Okay, so basically I wanna move them on top of this eye right here. So we're gonna have, we're, we're just gonna change this one thing for this UV, this one UV. And we're gonna do it non-destructively. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag, click and drag this one here. I'm gonna drag it on top of this one right here. Okay, because I just want, so I'm just gonna just drag it right on top as closely as possible, honestly. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit off. Yeah, I'll say that's close enough. Now I'm just gonna press A to select everything and I'm gonna, gonna press S to scale it right down, okay? So I just wanna scale it until it's actually right on this size, the size of this uh, thing here. So I just wanna make sure the outsides are aligned first. Okay, so let me just save. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, change, just press uh, W W until I get this select lasso tool. And I'm just going to, oh wait, I may need to do W here instead. And I'm just gonna select, yeah, until I have the circle select tool here, I'm gonna select every one of these points. So you can't use the normal select tool here because you wanna select the points underneath as well, okay? So you wanna make sure the points are selected underneath. Now I'm gonna press S, okay? So I'm just gonna scale inwards until I just, and just press G to move it around until I just isolate this area right here, because I want to make sure that I'm right in this area here. Okay, so yes, yeah, so I just want to make sure that I'm just approaching that black area there. Okay, so that should be fine there. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the shading tab. And if it doesn't crash, yep. So nothing happened though. Uh, that is because we're not actually using the UV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift A, search, and go for the UV map node. And I'm just going to change this to eyes UV and connect the UV into vector. And let's have a look. Voila, <laughs> voila, indeed. We kind of have the texture appearing on top. In fact, we could just edit this UV slightly. Maybe just edit the edges of this. I'm thinking that we might have had this too big actually. Uh, let me just press A and let me just scale it down a little bit because we just want the blue area on this iris actually, not the black area. So that might be slightly better. Let me just uh, scale, grab these points here and just scale them up a little bit, just so we don't encroach too much on the black area, because we want a little bit of black, but we don't want too much. Yeah, okay, that looks a little bit better, I'd say. So now we have uh, Nia, so Nia is looking fantastic. And let me just go to uh, the render preview mode but let me change this to cycles and let me change this to GPU compute. 
Okay, and also under the world settings, I'm gonna to go to shading and I'm gonna to go to world and I'm just gonna make sure that this strength is zero. Okay, so it'll be completely black here. So it'll be completely black, so I'll need to add a light. I'm also gonna turn off denoise for render um, because that's gonna be really annoying. I'm gonna turn on film transparent so I don't render anything else. And I'm just gonna turn, I'm gonna grab an area light. So what I did, I press light, shift A, light area, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press G, Z. I'm gonna bring it upwards. Now we see how Nia looks. Nia looks fantastic. In fact, I could probably turn down that surface scattering, subsurface scattering a little bit by going to the shading tab and just making sure if I go back to object and then I go to all these here, I can turn down the translucency to 0 0.1 or even 0 0.01 to have it a little bit less pronounced, but honestly, um, I'm kind of happy with it, how it looks like that. It's okay, um, that looks okay to me. Okay, so this looks fantastic and all, but we wanna add the morphs. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select new gens for Victoria 8. I'm going to click on the morphs tab here, and I'm gonna import custom morphs. So I'm using NGV8, um, so I can just go to the, the Three Feet Wolf base, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this category to gens, okay? And I'm just going to change body part to body. I'm gonna press A to select all the gens and just press import custom morphs, okay? And yeah, so that should have imported all the morphs there. So we'll be able to use those morphs. Um, now we also need to import those morphs on the body itself, so the Victoria 8 mesh. So I'm going to import custom morphs and I'm just going to import the three feet wolf, all these ones. So I'm just gonna press A, and I'm just gonna make sure it's all on gens and body, and just press import custom. Okay, and we're just gonna wait a little bit, and I think we should have imported everything. So you should see under the morphs tab, you'll have, under the custom morphs, you'll see this new gens kind of thing. Um, if you just bring it outwards a little bit, you'll see the name of them. Okay, but we'll be able to use them later, but there's just one more thing that we have to do, which is, because if you just have a look here at this, so basically, um, let me just um, go edit preferences and let me just enable the um, MHX rig. So just make sure MHX runtime system is enabled here. Um, so now when you press N here and you press MHX, which should be here, and you click on the skeleton here, you should be able to go to the layers and you wanna enable the head. So the most important thing here is we just change this head right here. So we change it to, um, so let's have a look what happens when we go to pose mode with the skeleton. We've selected this pose mode. Um, let me go to the tweak tool by pressing W and let me just press G to move this around. Okay, so like basically when it goes upwards, you can see there's something weird going on. Like those eyes, they don't really do and look, look at this, like it looks really, really, really weird. So why is this happening? So good question. Okay, so um, let me just, um, let me enable screencast here so you can actually see what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna press A and press Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, just to move these back. Um, but what we need to do here is we actually need to go N and I need to enable, uh, click on the skeleton, go to the MHX tab, you want to enable the face kind of bones here. Okay, so what we need to do is we actually need to uh, bring this upwards actually. So we need to make sure that these eyes are actually aligned. So we just need to move this mesh here. Um, so I'm just gonna move it along with these cubes. Um, yep, I'm gonna move them upwards so that they're actually, um, yeah, I actually need to move the this uh, these eyebrows as well. So I'm shift selecting everything that I need to move, including including the gens um, and the eyebrows and everything. I'm just gonna press GZ. Oops, oh yeah, oh yeah, so why are the eyebrows not moving? Because they're locked in place. So let's go to object data and let's unlock that as well. And let's go to uh, the gens as well and make sure they're unlocked as well. Okay, so now let's shift select these and the cubes as well. And now we can press GZ. Um, okay, uh, let me just also select the mesh, GZ. Okay, so let's go from numpad one. So let's go GZ. 
Okay, so I think this should work a little bit better now. So basically, when we click on the skeleton, we go to pose mode, and we use this eye control here. Okay, so let's have a look. So it looks okay-ish. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with it slightly. It's a little bit off, but I'm okay with it. I'll just finish. Let me just check it out. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yep, it looks better-ish, but it's still a little bit off. So you can adjust the, me the mesh a little bit higher or lower, depending. But it, this one's actually pretty good. Let's see. Um, it's it's okay-ish. Um, okay, okay. Let's just see. Like I could just adjust it a little bit. So what I'm thinking of is let me just move it to the highest point. Let me move this site kind of thing to the highest point where it looks it's starting to look weird. And then let me go to object mode, and then select all the meshes again with a shift key. And I'm just going to select all these. And let me just move it upwards with GZ. So does this look better or does this look worse? Okay, so this... Okay, so if you move it lower, you can see it's starting to look weird. Um, so the reason is because of the shape key, the bones are slightly off. Okay, so... Yep, I think around here is probably as good as we're going to get it. Because this is like looking really, really upwards. And technically you would never do this. Um, but um, we're just using an extreme pose just to check it out. So you can see, yep, that looks better. Okay, I would say that's looking much more natural. You can look downwards, upwards, and kind of the eyebrows clip a little bit. But I'd say that's like pretty decent. Okay, yep. Okay, so that eye control is fine. So that's the one thing with the eye controls because sometimes when you add shape keys, the eye controls do kind of um, bug out a little bit. We'll also check uh, the head controls by going to pose mode and I'll also rotate this around. Oh God, that's actually not working as well as it could be. Because um, you can see it's coming out of the head, which is not good. That's not good at all. Um, let me just go to object mode and let me go to pose mode. Let me go to, um, wait, sorry. Let me just click on this and click on the eyelashes. And in fact, let me just kind of move this head around a little bit until it's kind of clipping. And then let me go to object mode and I want to select everything again. So I want to select this, these cubes, and this. So let me just move it downwards until it looks more legitimate. Yeah, I'd say that's more legit. So sometimes you kind of just have to move it a little bit until it looks okay-ish. Okay, so now let's go to pose mode and let's check it again. So let's just rotate it around. Okay, yes, so the eyes are now staying in place a lot better, right? So you have to do these kind of tests to make sure that the eyes stay in place uh, wherever you move this sight counter and wherever you move the head and whenever you move the body because this will need some extensive movements and you wanna make sure that the eyes don't fly out of the head. <laughs> and you can do that just by moving the mesh a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty much done. Let me just check if there's any final things. Um, okay, we can just add the hair as the final step, I'd say. So let's just add the hair, and then we will finally be done with this tutorial, which has taken quite a while. Um, let me just um, uh, import the, the, the hair and everything. So let me just import all. Let me go into game, characters, campers, uh, near, uh, models, heads, accessories, top, models, NK hair. Okay, so we've gotten this hair here. So what we can do is right click shade smooth. And what we can do is we can drag this skeleton here. So we can just drag it upwards a little bit. Okay, so 
we're going to drag it upwards and then maybe G X, so G Y to move it backwards onto her head. Okay, and we actually want to bring it down a little bit because it's actually supposed to look something like this. G Y. Okay, it's actually supposed to look something like that. So I'm just going to scale it up a little bit because it's supposed to be because we scaled up the head to be bigger if we remember. So something like that looks okay. Um, in fact, let me scale it down a little bit. Okay, yeah, actually, that's actually pretty decent as long as it isn't as it isn't clipping up the front because that's my major concern. Okay, so G Y. If I go G Y. G Y. Oops, the wrong direction. G Y. Okay, so it should kind of look like that ish. And there's no major clipping. Yeah, that's actually already okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna click on the hoodie itself, on the beanie, and we're gonna use low, low UE shader. So I'm just going to use DVD Pit Princess Clothing. I'm gonna select the game folder, which is just this game folder here, where I exported from U model. Press add shader maps to all meshes. Okay, that's good. But also, we wanna change this second material here, which is NK hair. Um, if I just use Epic Pen, to do one thing real quick. So if I just use Epic Pen here, so basically uh, this material here is material slot zero. Okay, so actually let me do that a little bit better. Uh, material slot zero. And this one here is material slot one because when we count down here, this one will be material slot one. So obviously this is responsible for the hair. So what do we want to select? We want to select one, right? Because we want to add the hair preset to just one of these options, one of these, not both of these. Because this one will add it to both of these. Uh, but obviously, the first one's the beanie, and the second one is the hair. So we want to just add one, and then we want to change it to add sheet map to multiple materials. Okay, so now we have that in there, which is great. Um, the only thing is, we don't need all these extra bones at the bottom. So I'm just going to go, go tab, and I'm just going to delete all these bones, like this joint neck, these torso bones, there's no need for them, okay? So I'm just gonna delete actually all of them. I'm just gonna hold the shift key, just make sure I've selected everything. Press delete, bones, okay? And did I leave anything there? No, I don't think I did. I'm just gonna make sure I didn't. So I just have these three bones now. Let me just make sure I only have three bones in my skeleton. Yes, I only have three bones in my skeleton. Great, okay, so. Now, because these these bone, these three bones are the ones that are responsible. Okay, so let me just uh, rub out these this zero one one thing that explanation. Okay, so now all I need to do is I just need to. So you can fuse the skeletons together. You can join the skeletons together. But uh, in the interest of preserving the skeleton, so you can transfer animations between skeletons, I would suggest uh, select the hair skeleton here. So this skeleton. And what you want to do is you want to press, go to pose mode, click on the joint head skeleton, and you want to add a bone constraint to it. What you want to do is you want to add a child of constraint and you want to target. Uh, so this is the root bone. So this is the root bone that, that moves everything else. So you want to select the hair root bone, this one here, which is responsible for all the children, which is the hair. Um, and what you want to do is you want to target the, um, the, skeleton so you want to target the victoria 8 skeleton and what you want to do is you want to target the bone called the head bone so how do we know we want to target the head bone uh so and you want to press set inverse so it will go back into place but the head bone is this one right here if we go to pose mode and we select this bone here we can see its head and this one's controlling the head so obviously um we should kind of uh parent I use a child of constraint on that. And we'll just do some basic rotations by pressing R and just make sure that the hoodie stays in place, which I'm pretty sure it does. So let's just use R. Yep, okay, so it stays in place and the eyes don't die. So I'm just gonna press A to select all the bones, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S. Um, Alt, Alt R, please. <laughs> Alt R, please. Yeah, okay, finally, it was just delaying a little bit. One thing I did forget as the final thing so basically we have to fuse the geograph. So we have to fuse the genitalia to the body. So all we need to do is we just need to uh, click on the new, the genitalia, control click the Victoria 8 mesh. So it's the active one. Then you go N, then you go to the DAS importer menu, transfer shape keys. 
Okay, so then you just go OK. We go to the finishing tab. We just go merge geographs and we turn off merge UV layers, but add vertex table is fine. Just press OK. Okay, so now you should be able to see that the geographs, like the genitalia, is merged with your model. So you should be able to just uh, save here and pretty much that should be done. Um, I'll just show you how to render this out. Might as well, since we're already here. Um, let's just go to render preview mode. I'm just gonna add in the camera. So I'm just gonna go shift A, add in a camera, control alt numpad zero. Um, okay, and I'm gonna go to view. So I'm just gonna go press N and open up this menu and just go view, camera to view. And I'm just going to kind of uh, bring it down a little bit. Control alt numpad zero, um, camera to view. So I'm just gonna go shift, I'm gonna zoom in on the body, okay. So I think we're gonna use a, we're gonna use a, 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 a larger frame like this, 1920. So we're gonna use a narrow frame just by changing the resolution X and Y. So we're just gonna make a render like this. The second thing we're gonna do is, we're just going to, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna turn on tr film transparent we're gonna make sure color management is on medium high contrast, which is gonna make it look immediately better. So you can just hide the um, skeletons here and you'll be able to see a preview. You can add some more lights, like a backlight and everything, but I'm not gonna do that in this case because this is just a preview render, just to give you a preview. And then what I'll do is I'll just make sure I disable these other things from rendered view, otherwise they'll actually pop up. Um, I'll disable that in rendered view as well. Um, I'll just make sure everything that I want is enabled in rendered view. Okay, cool, that looks good. And I'm just going to go to the compositing node, use nodes, and I'm just going to enable some render passes. I wanna enable the denoising data pass. Um, okay, and then I'm just gonna add a shift A, add a denoise node in the middle. Okay, and you can just use the image to image denoising normal to normal, and denoising albedo to albedo. And we just connect this albedo to albedo, uh, sorry, image to image, and that is pretty much done. Uh, let's just go to the render settings, and we'll just make sure that it's not insanely high. Like, so this should be 32, and this should probably be 128 max samples. Okay, so we're only denoising once with that uh, denoise node. And let's go render, render image, and let's just do it. And let's have a look how this looks. And make sure film transparent is on here as well. So we'll just wait for it to render. And you can kind of just use this character wherever. So you can, using this method, you can get a nude uh, a body. Uh, and you can convert basically any character, any game character, as long as you have the head and the head textures um, to a actual body. I will show you how to add clothing to this next time as well. Okay, so we can see we're getting it. We're just uh, doing samples. It is taking a little bit long because I am, <laughs> I am uh, recording as well. So we'll just wait for it to kind of do its thing. Okay, yep, so you can see that it kind of rendered out. So we can just go image, save, and then I can just save it wherever. So I'm just gonna save it here. I wanna call it demo, uh, uh, near demo. Okay, okay, so just hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and how to actually make really, really great bodies uh, with by taking and stealing textures uh, from Daz models. You are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan out.